testing, 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 one, two, three. All right, everyone, welcome back to another Friday Night Live stream here at Christ Center Ironworks. We have the special guests, as always, you know them, you love them, the Thomas Goody Moots in the house. How's it going, guys? How's it going? Oh, obviously, we got Jessica behind the computer there, yep. the typey fingers McGee, Hello. as we all like to call her, or at least <laughs> I do. And uh, yeah, so... It ought to be a pretty good stream tonight. Tonight we are going to be forging a much larger miniature anvil. So uh, I did not weigh that out before we got started. We probably should have. I did not weigh it. Well, so, you can do the quick math on it. What was this, three inches in diameter? I think uh, it was three two, inches. It was two and a half by... Two and a half by what, ten? Uh, you know, we can, we can do that when we pull two, it out. Two and, a half, two and a half by eight inches. So somebody, quick math, volume calculation. Give us the weight of that. Uh, piece in the uh, comment section down below. But anyways, it's a chunk of 4140. We're going to end up forging it into an anvil. Now, that is going to be in celebration of 500,000 subscribers that we just recently passed on the channel not too long ago. Um, so uh, that is going to be that. So we're going to go ahead and make, make up another anvil <laughs> and progressively, progressively bigger. So who knows what we'll do at a million subs. Um, well, we'll do something there. That'll but, be a pouring of the anvil. I yeah, think. I don't know what it'll be, but <laughs> but hopefully not for a while to come yet. <laughs> yeah, give, give, us a, give us a few months. Like, yeah, until cooler weather. Yeah, I think least. I think we're gonna start with. I think we're gonna just go back to doing some simple little projects for our mm. Friday night live. So this is a giveaway live stream. So we will be doing a giveaway tonight. Uh, we will be giving away all sorts of goodies, everything from. Uh, again, it's the year of the treadle hammer, so we'll be giving away one of our treadle hammer kits that we sell over our website, www.blacksmithingblanks.com. Uh, so be sure to check that out. What did it say? Dot com. That's right. Um, so we'll be giving one of those away. We'll also be giving away another pair of tongs uh, donated to us by Possum Sausage, mm -hmm. or Keith Bear, if you will. Uh, we'll be giving away from a hook bending tool from... Uh, treadle shed or Robert Lonis as we all like to know him. We'll be giving away a ball peen hammer from Kyle Jones and we'll be giving away three hooks from Thomas Goodymoot here. Yours truly. From this weird guy. Yeah from that weird guy. He did a great job. We'll show all that off here uh, in a little bit. But So we got the piece hot. Um, it's almost to the point of being ready to be forged on. This thing's going to throw a ton of heat. Thomas is going to be doing some of the striking but it should be a lot of fun uh, and, you know, yeah, lots of good stuff. Oh, and we'll be giving away the, the little miniature anvil we made for our 250,000 subscribers. So mm. all that in one evening. That's right. It's going to be a good one. It'll only take like four hours, right? <laughs> yeah. Can we do it? Can we do it within two hours? I just took 20 minutes <laughs> off our two-hour time clock just by talking. So who do we have, Jess? Well, uh, David Reidnor says, I'm glad my schedule changed, so now I get to be at these live streams. Hey, hey, good to have you, David. We have Possum Sausage, of course, Dana Keith. Maggiore. Mr. Dana. Keith. Hello, hello. Uh, let's see. Hi, Desert. Hi, Dan Desert. Animals. Hello, hello. Danimals Creation. Danimals. Kars Thompson. Good to uh, see you, Kars. Let's see here. Some of you guys were very chatty to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> John Mayberry. Kevin Zufelt. John. Kevin, hello, hello. Yeah, to meet right, you. Good. Uh, Troy, also. Hey, Troy. Mr. T. Roy. The T. Roy. Uh, let's see. <laughs> we have a couple of new members as well. Hey, awesome. Let's scroll to those. Um, David Landolfi joined us, the Bellows Boy, as did Audi Nation. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Hey, everybody, give them a round of applause. A round of applause. Appreciate that support. And uh, at the very beginning, Black Collar jumped up to the Golden Mastersmith. Ah, Black Collar Ironworks. Thank you so much, brother. I greatly appreciate that. Him and his legion. Man, the Golden Mastersmith. Well, he has to be a Golden Mastersmith if he's going to have a legion underneath that's him, right? That's right. That's right. You know, if, if he's going to have sense. a legion of troops of, yeah. you know, people he's leading. <laughs> we need to come up with, like, titanium or something, you mm -hmm. know, or, or platinum level. Oh, yeah. You know, Master Smith or something. <laughs> Give him something to obtain to. Yeah. It's like an honorary title. You have to be at Golden Master Smith for mm -hmm. a certain period. Yeah. And, and then you get, get like, unobtainium <laughs> level. I like the unobtainium. Un un the unobtainium <laughs> level. <laughs> it's honorary and it just automatically charges your card, <laughs> whether you wanted it or not. 
<laughs> they're like, ah, he's good for it. They're good for it. So, mm -hmm. well, awesome. Good to have everybody here. So I want to check on the metal and the fire here. Um, yeah, that's hot enough for us to do our first round of walloping on. Um, one thing to keep in mind whenever you're working on a piece that is this big and this heavy is it throws off a lot of heat. So if you can plan to do these around winter time when you're, uh, you'll have, you'll be a little more comfortable we'll be able to sleeve up and put on a lot of clothing. Uh, just like if you were going to try to cast something with a large amount of steel or something like that, you wouldn't do it barefooted and shirtless, right? You would put on a shirt, probably long sleeves, big gloves. You would find ways of protecting yourself. This metal puts off a lot of radiant heat um, and it will absolutely have these gloves smoked and cooked by the end of this evening. So um, just be aware that if you ever do undertake something in this large, can you shut that off please? Thank yeah. you. And do you have your mic on you somewhere? Yes, right here. Okay, hopefully they can hear you. <laughs> yeah, they should so, be able to hear me. Yeah, so if you are undertaking some large project with large piece of steel, prepare accordingly. So, all right, you want to grab your... Oh, we'll just get to hammering on it. So. You don't want to take much measurement on it? No, nah, I don't care that much. We'll measure it after, after the fact. Yeah, it's two and a half by about seven inches. Uh, all right, got a camera too, Jess? Uh-huh. Hold up, you got to aim for the far side. Go ahead and hammer straight down on there. We need to start T-boning it. The other thing is if you're working with a piece this size, it's important to rotate it often and also give your strikers a break. Out at the end. Always on the end. Right. Not near me at all. We just need the end to squat out. I'll do that. Go for it. Go for it. All right. Let's start to get a bit of taper to it. Work them lips back in, dude. Well. Give me a few more licks right there on the edge. Again. Well. <coughs> All right. So we can start dog boning this is what this operation is called. So not quite a dog bone, but it's a one-ended dog bone. So just like in the railroad bolt, so the railroad bolt, we had the advantage that we had enough mass already going to the forward and the aft of the piece here, toward front and the back, there was enough mass to squat down, enough mushroomed up, that we could squash it down and get a lot of, you know, uh, horizontal motion out of that and be able to pull out some real nice horns. Because we're starting with round stock, we need to encourage this to go out into that shape so we can grab the material and pull out the various horns on this piece here. So what we're doing is we're squashing it in one dimension and we're upsetting it in the opposite dimension. So we're trying to elongate this surface while we're getting progressively shorter. 
just like in the railroad bolt, as we upset this piece, the back, the bottom is going to naturally upset. And as it naturally upsets, it's going to create a really nice stable platform for itself. Um, and you can do all sorts of things, pull and feed out on it and things like that. But this ought to work out pretty well here. All right, let's go get this back in the fire and get her hot. Uh, I'm at the fire, Jess. I yep. want to talk about some. Stop texting, please. All right. So let's get on it. So, at are we at the fire now? Yes, we are, Chief. Mm -hmm. We good? Yeah. Okay. So at the fire here, I've stood it up with the the end that we're trying to get the motion out of, that we're trying to get it to take and uh, widen out. And I'm going to keep heating that in the fire or get it up a lot hotter than the rest of the piece. So this way I can control that motion. Um, this will naturally upset as it goes, but we need a lot of movement on the one end and not so much on this end. So we're going to go ahead and get this uh, stood up in the fire like that and let that end really heat up so we can get a lot of the motion out of it because all this material will act as an anvil and help spread that material a little more rapidly for us than Tom is trying to take and compress the whole piece. So instead of Tom is trying to compress the whole piece all at once, we're going to get a lot more motion out of it, moving width-wise, and then he can compress the whole piece a little bit easier. And if they're wondering the weight of that sledge, it's 16 pounds. Yeah, so Thomas is swinging a 16-pound sledge at her there. Bar N Forge has told the metal positive things to encourage it. No upsetting. <laughs> High Desert says I'm watching on computer and a phone right now. You're going to be a happy little tree. Such a happy little tree. Robert Webb says that's going to wear you all out. Not this guy. He's part machine. <laughs> I know. Thanks, Thomas. <laughs> Steven Padilla says, okay, I put you on the big TV in the living room. We'll be commenting here on my Chromebook. Awesome, awesome. Take all the viewership we can get. Keith says, would it be better to have Thomas strike with a straight peen to encourage more stretch for an aft? Um, yes and no. So a straight peen, um, a straight peen in this situation, it will and it won't help. So. A straight peen will help move a lot more surface material, but it won't get down into the core of the material. To, to, it won't get down deep enough to push as much material. It's going to push a lot of the surface around, but it will do very little for the core, the, the core of the piece to push it out to get that nice, big, thick anvil shape to it. I hope that makes sense. One thing that you could do is you could come in with a very large fuller or progressive fullers and drive it just dead center as deep as you can and then push then slowly drive the two halves that you divided out. That is one way of taking and dividing up that cross section of bar stock. Um, but if you just come in and go whack willy nilly with a like with a straight peen or a cross peen at this point because there's so much thickness in this piece it just goes into spreading the surface and not actually spreading what's underneath. Um, so, so in smaller pieces, like smaller anvils that you might make, uh, yet that's a perfect option uh, to do spreading like that with a, with a straight peen. But when you're working with something that has this much mass, everything is, has an anvil effect and it's resisting it, uh, resisting you. So, it's very hard to develop enough umph downwards to push that material out with just a straight peen. Now if you had a press, like a hydraulic press, and you were coming down with a fuller, that's got a lot of squeeze force, so you're going to divide up the material a lot more effectively than with a hammer of this sort. So. We ready? All right, let's go to camera number two, Jess. All right. Go for it. Ugh. 
half of this job is just picking up once it falls. Go for it. Work with it. It's hitting the corner. It's right dead in the middle. Okay. Hit this edge. Yep. That pucker, two little pucker out. Anybody playing their dressing game is going to be tore up <laughs> or well hydrated. Yeah, well hydrated guys. We need a something else here. Would your other tongs right, fit that? Might have to get some to adjust. Go. Again. All right. Ugh. Let me see if I can't get some to adjust it to fit this. I got this piece. Hooray, McAllister. Uh, yeah, Roy is using metallurgical coke. I can hold it like that. That'll be fine. Do that. Since I can't get a good purchase on this, oh. you're going to have to watch my wrists. Yeah. So you don't murder them. So Just hit the your striking needs to be more accurate now. So I'd move down to the smaller hammer. Okay. Since that one's getting a little striked out. For some reason, we lost the input from camera three. I still see the screen is on, but oh. I think it's going to look good. Probably stepped on it. You have it? Uh, nope, not yet. <coughs> nope, nothing. Just plugged it in again. Check my hand here. Oh, well, we got something there. We'll have to restart that camera. Okay. Shut that one off. Okay. All right. All right. Stay off that wire there. Yeah. Sound good? Okay. Talk, Jess. All right. We I got a some, good feed now. I need some communication here. Okay. The feed's good now. I picked it up. Good. Are those the tongs you had for the giant sledgehammer? Hmm? Are those your giant sledgehammer yeah, tongs? Yeah, one of many projects like that. Yeah. Who do we have? Questions, comments, yes. complaints, concerns? Uh, let's see. Uh, Stephen Padilla says, I was briefly on a previous live stream, but this is the first time I'm able to join in a timely fashion and that I might be able to watch until the end. Awesome. Oh, well, hopefully you can. It's good to have you. Debaca says next week, Roy forges giant round tongs. <laughs> I do have a pair of giant ones for when I did a 35 pound sledgehammer. But these are large enough. I forged these hammer, forged these tongs here. Um, these are more like a, these are like a wolf jaw tong. Not really a wolf jaw tong, but like a wolf jaw tong. So, that was a lot of work forging those out. Yeah. Oh. Nathan McAlpine Go says hello. Number two, you see him? Yep. Nathan McAlpine says hello. Hello, Nathan. Good to see you can make it. 
Troy says, hey, y'all, I'm headed to the hay field. God bless each of you. <laughs> Take care, buddy. Make the hay while the sun shines. Go make that money, brother. Go make that money. David Payne says, just the look of that hammer makes my shoulder hurt. <laughs> Not bad, you just gotta add more brains and brawn. More no. bones and brains. <laughs> yeah. And I've never been accused of being a smart man. Or you need to know somebody who has more brawn than brains. Uh, let's see. Hoodoo joined as a member. Hoodoo, thank you. Thank you for the membership join. Greatly appreciate that. Let it, let it just cook now. Uh, absorb so it's not burning off thank you thank you so you joined as a member bellows boy oh, take it I believe so yes yeah cool so Stephen Padilla says FYI Padilla rhymes with tortilla not gorilla gotcha tortilla tortilla Padilla Padilla are we ready Got camera two, Jess. Okay. Go for it. Hitting too much on that edge. Go for it. Walk up the shank. Yep. Well. Go for it. Mm. Go for it. Well. Nope, use the same hammer. Come down flat. Don't aim for an edge. Come down flat on it. Go for it. That means you need to bring up your rear of your hammer. There you go. Well, you're struck out. Chuck Miller says, I think Thomas is looking for a striker now, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Probably is. Nope. Get her hot. Oh, Hoodoo said he joined us. Blacksmith Shop Help. Uh, hey, Blacksmith Shop Help. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was back a little ways, so it wasn't easy for me to get to. Mm -hmm. Gene Dukarski says, somebody was telling me about burning corn, and I'm going to try that. Give it a go. Only way to know where other works is give it a go. I didn't have much luck with it. So... There's always that look for alternative fuels, right? To burn in a coal forge. Um, besides the old, you know, the old uh, tried and trues of coal and or um, coke or, if you will, charcoal. So 
generally speaking, there's a reason why those are tried and true. They're not always accessible, depending on what region you are, or maybe they're not even economically uh, viable of an option for you, depending on what region you are in the US or where you're at around the world. But when I look at whether something's any good for smithing fuel or not, I look at it from a professional smith standpoint. I look at it from a point of getting work done. And a lot of problems come up when you kind of go across, when you go out of what's been the tried and true method for literal eons of human history. So when you go out and you say, oh, well, I'm going to burn rice and see if that'll be a good forge fuel. Can you burn rice? Yeah, you can burn rice. Just ask me. I can burn rice. <laughs> I can burn it in a skillet any day. So yes, you could take and burn it. Will it give out enough heat to actually be useful to you? And I don't mean just cooking you, but actually getting your steel nice and hot for you. And the answer is no on rice. Um, corn will be the same thing. Yes, could you heat a bar of steel like campfire level? Uh, where maybe it's a dull red, sure, probably could. But are you going to get it to the point where you could do forge welds with it uh, or be able to take and manipulate the material like you see someone on television doing um, and or maybe you went and saw a blacksmith who does have coal and or a gas forge or something like that. No, you won't be able to do it as well. Just like there's always, there's been a little bit of debate uh, a little bit of confusion, it wouldn't be debate, I would say, it turns into a debate on whether it's any good, but there's been some confusion about anthracite coal and whether it's any good for smithing. And as a professional smith, no, it isn't any good. I can answer that very easily. Anthracite doesn't coke up. Anthracite puts off a lot of heat, sure, but it's like burning rocks and it lets a lot of air. Because it doesn't coke up, it doesn't get the porous substructure in, in the piece, so therefore it doesn't consume the extra oxygen in the environment, and therefore it puts more air against your steel and causes a lot of burning or excessive scaling issues uh, or oxidization issues with your steel. So is it, a pro is it a good heat source for smithing? No, it is not. Can you use it as a heat source for smithing? Yes, you can. That's been demonstrated many, many a times. Um, and that may be all you have in your area. So just as long as you know what you're working with and know that, yeah, it's not the best heat source in the world, but I can still get stuff done on it, great. It's got enough air. Oh, you know, great, good, as long as you understand that. But if you say that anthracite is better than bimutimus, you're wrong. Just right out the gate, you're wrong, because it is not. It is not superior in smithing, uh, for smithing coal. It's just, it's just not. It's, <laughs> it's a factual statement. It's not up, it's not up for, um, debate. yeah, debate, you know. It is, what do they call that, Object, objectionably true, right? Can you still use it? Yeah. Can you still forge in it? Yeah. Can you still forge weld with it? Yeah. How much will it will it be as good as bimutimus? No. But that's okay. It's depending on where you're at and your availability with it. Go for it. Yep. Hit all off to one side. You got to try to hit squarely. See that? It's good. What kind of metal is that? 4140. Hit right there.
aim for the edges now, out towards the ends. There you go. Now the other end. Other end. Middle. Good. Let's get it hot again. So I'll hopefully I can show this off a little bit. You guys see that shape taking form? Mm -hmm. Yep. We're getting there. Just like the bolt. Yep. We need to drive this in down just a bit more. And then we're going to totally, then we're going to work the sides again. And it's starting to swell out. It's starting to swell out and thicken up this way again. So then we're going to squeeze it down and force that mass out to the left and the right here. Mm -hmm. No. Steve Art, yes, Roy does have multiple uh, forges, coal forges and gas forges. Uh, various sizes, degrees of quality <laughs> of manufacture, you name it. <laughs> so I have worked in charcoal, I've worked in biminimus green coal, I've worked in metallurgical grade coke, are we at camera number one? Mm -hmm. I have even worked in charcoal. Um, I work in gas. I have worked with just using oxyacetylene torches and propane torches. So just about every way to Sunday that you can heat metal and beat metal, I have done so far. Um, and there's a reason why blacksmithing coal, soft coal, bimutimous coal is the box standard for forging fuel. It's either that or metallurgy grade coke. Those are your two box standards for forging fuel because they are the most efficient per pound. The amount of BTUs you get per pound, cool that off, would you? So the amount of BTUs you get out of it per pound of the stuff is just by far better than anything else that there is out there to do. Now, the only things I haven't done is induction forging. I haven't messed or played with induction forges or ceramic chip forges. So I haven't done either of those two forges yet. Um, ceramic chip forge and a induction forge would both be pretty interesting to me. Yeah. Terribly so. <laughs> I tried building one and got that it was just as nasty as could be. So I decided it wasn't for me. Bridget Ironworks asked if this is going to be for looks or function. Oh, that'd be functional. Somebody can be able to use it if they wanted to. This will be like a small jeweler's anvil. So done for small stuff. Take around for shows. Stuff like that. Hmm? Good. What's up? Tabaka says, my CCI brand forced air gas burners are real dragons for heating metal. <laughs> Tarek McAllister says, would you recommend a coal forge or a propane forge for a beginner? Um, so that's, that's a good question. Um, I go back and forth on my advice on that. I personally, I dig the nostalgia of getting a, having a coal forge, smelling the coal smoke, you know, and just being that dirty blacksmith. So I, I dig that nostalgia in solid fuel forging. However, what is more accessible as a beginner smith to get kind of started on and get right into the craft is a gas forge. So I would say most likely a gas forge. Now, my opinion has shifted on that somewhat over the years because, because of accessibility to gas forges and the amount of information about gas forges online now, enough helpful information is out there. I used to say a coal forge before you got into a gas forge 
because a coal forge is if you can light a campfire, you can light a coal forge and start heating and beating steel. So it was fairly simple um, and there wasn't a whole lot that could go wrong. Whereas with a gas forge, if you get your gas hoses too close or your tank too close to your forge or you park that gas forge right up against something flammable or for the love of God, like some people online are doing, putting it directly on a wooden bench top, right? Stuff like that, it could burn your shop down very quickly. Um, you could catch gas hoses on fire. You can have all sorts of other incidents and issues uh, that as a beginner, you may not know what you're doing. Um, you can get backfiring back up into the hoses and, and into the burners, and that can be an issue. But now there is enough information out there. There's enough education out there. You block my light, my friend. Step to one side. There is enough information out there now that it's. I feel more comfortable to recommend a complete beginner or a newbie start with a gas forge versus a coal forge. Because I used to say, start with coal, get you know, and then get training on how to use a gas forge, and then you can get a gas forge. Um, but neither one is better than the other. Um, they both heat steel. They're two separate tools. They are to heat steel, but they work in two separate ways. They have their pluses and minuses. But in my opinion, they're two separate tools in the shop, and they're very handy to have around, both gas and coal. But if you're a beginner just getting started, it's easier to find a propane supplier around than it is to find good quality smithing coal around, generally speaking. Let's go to camera two. Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead, Thomas. Now work to the left and right of that thing. like a cross, like you're stepping across. You hit one in, next one overlays, next one overlays. Good. Start on the left, go to the right. Well, breathe, breathe, my friend, breathe, breathe me, child, breathe. There, towards some tip. There we go. Right towards the Well. Okay, so next heat. You have to progress across the blows here. You start on one end, so we knock the bulge out in the center. Yeah. But that's one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Gotcha. Right? So that's that's how the progression goes. Yeah. And then the same thing on top, right? Because we're caressing this shape out. Yeah. So if we just wail here and then wail over there and then wail in the middle and wail all over the place, we're, we're counteracting our, our, our pushing motion. We want to iron this out or like knead it like dough, right? Okay. We're trying to roll this out into shape, gotcha. if you will. So as we do this on this next heat, when we come through, right, we need to be able to keep all of our mark, all of our metrics in, in line here. So, you know, up here you're gonna knock the initial bulge out that way, but then you gotta start okay. doing that three hit yep. thing as you iron this out because we wanna keep them fairly even. I see. Does that make sense? Yep. 
Because if you just whack on it here, and then I move, and then you whack it over there, and then you move, and then you're back on this edge, and then you're back on this edge, it just needs to be flat. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right. Does it make sense? Yep. Okay. So if you do that, then it'll work. It'll work out a little bit more in unison there. So we can see that. Mm -hmm. Yep. The shape's really coming out of it. Mm -hmm. All right. This hot again. Possum Sauce is supposed to check your phone when you have a minute, Thomas. Oh, I'll have a minute right now. <laughs> <laughs> Athol Ironworks, thank you for gifting five memberships. Hey, hey thank you so much for that, Athol. Appreciate that, brother. Gene Dukarski says, good info, just not, not sure where to get coal. Oh, as far as that's why he's getting corn mm -hmm. instead. Yeah, so uh, again, there's that, that's the issue, right? You may be able to heat with corn, so I'm not saying, I'm not trying to discourage you from trying it, right? Because you may have loads of it. And I've heard, some, I've heard mixed results from people. I've heard some people be able to do it, and you know they say it works well for what they need it for. So go ahead and give it a try. Um, but don't be expecting to do forge welding in it, and don't be expecting to you know, put large masses of steel in corn and get it you, you know, to do stuff like that. Will you be able to hook, heat up smaller projects? Probably. I imagine you could. Um, anything that can char enough to create a charcoal like format uh, should put off a decent amount of heat. So, you know, give it a try, give it a try. Um, Anthracite, they sell it at almost every single tractor supply and hardware store in the winter months. Um, I know it's a seasonal thing, they don't get it, in, it's not in all the time. Um, you can get anthracite coal all around the country, um, usually in, a hard, in the form of, at a hardware store, bagged up. Um, and Again, that, it, it's not the best coal in the world to be smithing with, but lots of people smith with it because they don't have access to good bimunimus coal. Um, and then, you know, and be, beyond that, there's always, if you really get into it and you become a nut like me, you then just order it online and have it shipped to you. You know, you have it freighted to you and drop gated. Um, and that's the most economical. So like if you could get a club to do that with you and everybody pitch in, right, on say like a ton or two of coal to have it shipped to you, like nice good bimunimus coal, that's a good way of doing it as well as co-opting with a bunch of your fellow smiths. I see that, I see comments come up in forums, I'm not trying to go whole hams on anybody here, and they, you know, by all means, um, I see a lot of comments come up in forums about uh, just various various misinformations about coal, about um, what's the best smithing. I think anytime you say, you know, I, I think when everything, when it proceeds, when the statement is preceded by the best is or the only is, that's when you got to say, okay, you have to start questioning the information. So, you know, there's right things, right fuel sources, right ways of doing things for a particular project or maybe for a process or maybe where you're at in the country. If you're not in coal country, it's difficult to get coal. So where somebody might tell you, oh, you can't do that without coal. You know, coal is the best. Well, coal's not the best for you because you don't live in coal country, right? So we use what we got at our disposal. So Thomas, you can let off, buddy. And let that, let that just absorb the heat. So yeah, so you gotta use what's at your disposal where you're at because that is what's best for you. Um, obviously, if you're parked right on a coal mine, <laughs> what's best for you will never be gas, right? Will never be propane. Even though propane is, you know, has some luxurious features to it, you're parked on the freest vein in the world. It's right under your property, right? And you can just go to the hillside, you know, and dig a shovel full. 
right? So you can't be better than free. <laughs> so as long as it suits your application and to your purpose, and the same thing goes with tools. As beginner smiths out there, the same thing goes with your tooling. It just needs to be fit for purpose, and it needs to be a safe tool. If it checks marks off those two boxes, go for it. If it gets the desired result. Hello, Mr. Coffee. Hey, Mr. Coffee. Mr. John Coffee. Hopefully you're doing well there, John. I think we'll take one more heat on this. And then we'll set it in there. And then uh, we will give stuff away. How does that sound? Sounds good. Do some giveaways. 601. 601. How many people we got with us? Uh, it was 75 a minute ago. 75, right on. 76. Good comments, questions? You're awfully quiet over there. Um, Are people just having side comments or yeah, what? Yeah, just kind of the different fuels they use. Yeah. That kind of okay. Thing. All right. Out we go. Camera two, please. Okay. Go for it. Is it stout level? Yep, go for it. See how you're missing those ridges? You start hitting those ridges out. Yep. I work the middle more. Work just the middle. Oh. Hey babe, that was Thomas's phone. Was it? Yeah. Freaked me out, man. <laughs> Sound like people were getting in a fight just outside yeah. the shop there. <laughs> so, <Phew>. simmer. <laughs> if anybody didn't know, my phone started <laughs> playing music, and it sounded like something was going on out there. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what music you li listen to, well, but good lord. Music. Uh, a baseball game. Mm. You know, a whole bunch of screaming and hollering on it. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Have to settle down. I went all Hulk mode there for a <laughs> second. You. So go take care of business. Yeah. <laughs> Rigid. What we got? Go. Rigid Ironworks on a fifteen dollars super chat says, "How much did the piece you started with weigh? Any idea?" Nope. No clue. It was two and a half inches by about seven and a half inches. So if you want to measure up what that is and give us a quick volume calculation. Nobody commented, nobody, or at least Jessica tried. didn't mention no. it. So Nobody wanted to undertake the math. Nobody wanted to undertake the math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Debaca. He wanted you all to math it out. All right, well, let me math it real quick. I can do it. <laughs> hey, Roy, can I borrow your toes? No. <laughs> Got to do it without toes. All right, we'll map, we'll map it out here. That's 2.5 times. Uh, let's see here. 7.5 times point. Uh, yeah, it's 2.5 by 7.5. Oh, I need to do 2.5 again. That was the other dimension I was this and 
13, 13 and a third pounds. So 13 pounds, three ounces or so. Wow. Nick Murray hand forged gus 10 pounds. Nope. So about Close. 13 pounds. So this anvil started off at just a little over 13 pounds. 13 and a third, yeah. Roger Caldwell asked if Thomas listens to that long haired stuff. <laughs> no, no. This heathen listens to just a little bit of everything. I do. Yeah. Good. Making sure I'm not muted there. A little bit of bluegrass. Yeah, I got that little on the spicy country, side. None of that stage of country. Gotta Fishing. watch getting that two oxygen. Camera two, Jess. Yep. That poach out. Yeah. Work back up in the thickness of the piece. Well, I want some hammer blows right here. Up there. Lighten up on the blows. Just need to be more accurate. Let the hammer do the work. Put that down. Right. Yeah, just stay in the middle. I'll work out towards the tips. Yep. I'll work that ridge. Well, see that ridge that's formulating? Yeah. You need to work the ridge out to the tip. Okay. Because you've got a valley, now you work that ridge out towards the tip. There you go. Well, that's getting a lot of shape to it. Mm -hmm, it is. It's getting there. Slow but sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think Keith commented that he didn't think he'd be up to doing a forging challenge later tonight, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I only have one component left, Keith, on ours. Already got the sharp and pointy. Yeah. The mouth shovel. Yucky. Now I'm just working on the pitchfork. <laughs> Questions, Jess? Yep. Parag McAllister says, What do you recommend for a starter anvil? Um, so I will have to probably go with the Achayos. The Achayo or the recently released Harbor Freight Doyle Anvil brand. Um, I would recommend those as a starter anvil if you're in the market for the cheap, if you're in the market for something a bit more pricey, um, but still within the range of the masses. I could probably definitely recommend the Atlas Knife and Tool Anvils. Um, I've got one that I tested out, and uh, it's just a knife maker's anvil, but he's uh, coming out with a new one. The owner of the uh, Atlas Knife and Tool is Charles Steffen. And he's coming out with a new one that's got a horn on it. 
which is a lot better in my opinion because it has a horn and um, you know that's for more like your general forging so so yeah yeah I, I would say that and then if you want the kind of the best that can be purchased now uh, nowadays Holland Anvil so if, if you've got the money to spend you can go all the way up to the Holland Anvil but if you're just starting out and if you're just starting into the thing you don't really know what you're getting into uh, that's what I would get so in that kind of order if you will gotcha. oh it's Jacob Rawls who brought up the forging challenge okay I thought it was Keith's guy because I got one going with him. <laughs> Serious Michael says, if it weighed 13 to start, I wonder what it's going to weigh when it's done. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? We're not really having a whole lot of scale pop off. Yeah. Now, the calculation I did for it isn't perfectly exact. I, did, I calculated for a square. So, basically... Um, I calculated a two and a half inch square chunk by seven and a half inches long. Uh, obviously a round is not going to weigh as much as a square. So you could probably safely say it was probably right around 12 pounds. Right about there. Right, right around 12, you know, maybe 11 pounds, somewhere in that, that neighborhood ballpark. Mm -hmm. But it says 13 on the calculator, so we'll just go with that. We'll say it was 13. And then it'll show that it's like lost massive amounts of scale when we get done, and it's like five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> William Travers says, my cat Sylvester has left the room. It yeah. said y'all were making too much noise. Steel is one of those weird things. Uh, steel is one of those weird things that... Your, your brain can't just look at a piece of steel. You can't just look at a piece of steel and say, yeah, that's about 50 pounds. No, no, it's highly deceptive, highly deceptive. This here is a 16 pound sledge. Thomas, pull that other sledge over here. Is that eight pounds? Whatever it was. Is that what that is? Yeah, this was an eight pounder. I thought it was more than that. Or is that the 10? This is the 10 pounder. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is the 10 pounder. And that's a 10 pound sledge. So if you go to camera number two. Yep. See the difference? Well, I think that's what the six. This one is 16. So this is six pounds more than what this one is. Right? So this is six pounds more than what this is. But look at the size difference. Like, if you just were looking at the faces of that on the bar stock rack somewhere right would you be able to say that this one six pounds heavier not really right so steel really adds up years ago when i went to uh scrapyard down in dayton ohio um at first street recycling shout out to those guys at first street, street recycling they are awesome uh, hashtag not a sponsor but should be should be um when I went down there, the, uh, the guy at the time that was managing the place, um, his name was Rob, he said, <laughs> he said to me, he said, well, he said, I, you can get anything you want. He said, you just go over and weigh it out on the scales. He said, I just got, got one thing to tell you. He said, steel weighs more than you think, and it sure does add up quick. So and he's like, that's the only rule here, so buy lots, right? <laughs> and, uh, and he's right. You could buy something, you know, you buy one bar of three-eighths round that's 10 foot long, you're like, oh, I could probably get 20 of those. Okay, that weight just really went up there by a lot, right? One individual bar weighs almost next to nothing, but you start getting 10, 20, 30 bars put together, you know, you've got several hundred pounds of steel sitting there, and it doesn't look like much, you know, it just doesn't look like much. Um, and uh, so steel has always, always surprised me. You can pick up a hammer and you're like, good God, that hammer's got to be 40 pounds. And it's 18 or 20 pounds, you know. Mm -hmm. And then there's cartoonishly huge stuff uh, as well. So. Well, just look at what, when we were moving all the steel over yep. here, Roy. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh yeah, this ain't bad. I can pick up one, two bars. 
I tried to pick up four bars and it's like, nope. Yep. Not happening. It added that quick to you. So yeah. So yeah, so I don't know what that is. I'm sure I'll, I'll have it weighed out before the next time we do. Um, you know, before we actually give it away, I'll have the stats on it. And I'm actually, I'll actually on this one, I'll probably stamp in the weight of the anvil. I will stamp that into the side of it uh, when we get it all finished and done. And that way we know what the finish weight is at least. But it's gonna lose a lot of material and grinding to clean up the surfaces things like that, you know, when, when we get to that, get to that point. So, all right, so I'm going to have a seat for a second and I'll have Thomas bring me various items and we're going to do a giveaway. All right. So, um, and just a shout out to the community real quick, since I'm talk, keep talking, since Jessica doesn't seem to have any questions over there. Or oh yeah, comments. I got two for you. Whenever You've got two? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Go ahead, shoot those real quick, and then I'm going to do All the right. giveaway here. Uh, Sirius Maiko ask if there's going to be any forge welding involved in this. No, there will be no forge welds involved in this. This is all a solid one-piece forging. So, yep, all one solid piece. Uh, you know, the benefit of doing it in this, in this way, this is just a method I developed and I'll say I developed it because this is what I scratched my noodle on trying to figure out how to make a steak anvil by myself, unaided, without anybody with real experience in making anvils telling me any, any differently. So this is my method that I thought would be logical to make an anvil and be able to scale it up to make realistically as large an anvil as you want as long as you had heavy enough power equipment to move things around. Now, I'm sure someone has come up with being able to smith an anvil like this in the past, human centuries, <laughs> right, in the past. I'm sure it's been done before. So I'm not the originator of the concept. But just in this particular thing, I was, again, scratching my head, how can I make an anvil-like form? How could I forge an anvil? And this, just by looking at anvils and things like that and thinking about, like, how could I do it without forge welding it? How would I do it under a big power hammer, or maybe a really large press? And this kind of method is what I came up with uh, to do that. So the great method about, the great thing about this method is like I said, you want a bigger anvil, you scale it up to a much larger piece. Uh, if it gets too much for one guy to take and be striking on, like Thomas, get it, you know, get a whole group of guys to be striking on it, right? Or maybe you take it all the way up to the point where you know, hey, you're taking advantage of some big old 1,500 pound drop hammers, right? And you're smithing one underneath that, right? But you can still do that with this method. And I think that's what's kind of really cool about it is that uh, it's, you can make a dual horn or a single horn with a tail. You can do all of that, pull out the feet, create side shelves, cut in for uh, upset blocks. There's a lot of things you can do uh, using this kind of upset and squash method um, that I've developed here out of the shop. So give it a try, like on the railroad bolts, give it a try on a bolt first. Try it on a bolt, railer bolt. It's already got a lot of mass in the head of the bolt. So all you have to do is squash it down in one direction and then draw out the horns and then just upset it for the feet. And so try it with bolts first and uh, you know, see how you like it. And then you can just do, apply that same principle for you know, much, much larger stock. And you get to have fun. Kurt Martin says, before we get to giveaways, I just want to remind Roy who got him a coffee that cold morning in Virginia in March. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so wonderful. So wonderful <laughs> to the throat. Thank you. My coffee. Oh. You weren't demonstrating. What are you talking about? You don't matter. <laughs> I told you not to speak. <laughs> Get back over to your booth. <laughs> yes, some master. Yes, some master. Yes, some. Oh, all right. Chris Kelly says Thomas strikes like two. <laughs> uh, he does strike like two. He's pretty good. Pretty good hand. So, I think the first thing we'll give away is the hammer. How's that sound? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got this hammer here. Go to camera number two. Yep. So we got this hammer here. 
Uh, this is like a refurbished hammer from Kyle Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a Blackhawk HT 1008-1. So I don't know what manufacturer this is um, of, of a hammer, but obviously you can see it's still a good hammer with plenty of rebound on it, uh, things like that. It's on a standard length hammer handle. Looks like a 16-inch hickory handle that he's got in this. And uh, done a real good job of refurbing this. And this is going to make a really nice smithing hammer. One thing I checked for was that the face was already dressed nicely for a smithing hammer, and it is. So it comes pre-dressed for you. Uh, so you should be able to take this thing right in the forge and get to smithing with it, whoever wins. The weight on this is about two pounds, uh, which is a, a very large, you know, a, a decent size for a, uh, you know, a ball peen hammer. So, um, so yeah, so whoever gets this is going to be really, really fortunate mm -hmm. to have a really nice ball peen hammer there. So that's the one we're going to give away. So the way this works is I'm going to take and rat-a-tap-tap -tap the anvil. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the ball peen hammer to do that, as nice, nice as it is. But I'm going to rat-a-tap-tap -tap the anvil, and when I come to a stop, Jessica's going to pick one name at random in the comment section uh, down below. And, and then, yeah, that's it. Whoever wins, they have 24 hours to get in, get in touch with us mm -hmm. with your contact information through the contact email in the description down below. So, yep, we ready? Let's do it. Everybody excited? Everybody mm -hmm. commenting? Yeah, they are. And generally, it's helpful if you're having, a, since there are a bunch of side conversations going on simultaneously with giveaway chats chat with something that has to, has something to do with hammer. It, it helps out. If you put hammer in your comment, that really helps out. Jessica, sort those. Ready? Mm -hmm. yep. Set and go. <clears throat> Who do we have, Jess? We have Anvil and Fly Forge with Hammer Hammer. Hey, hey. Anvil and Fly Forge. Congratulations. You won the hammer hammer, the ball peen hammer, the Blackhawk HT 1008-1. Mm -hmm. That's what you won. Good sir or ma'am, get with us. Contact email, description, do it. 24 do it hours, now. 24 hours, or Roy keeps it in his shop permanently. <laughs> Take this from me, Thomas. <laughs> do you see how good he is? You need like a cloak right Hand now. Me. Hand me. Next item. Oops. I can't grab that one handed. <laughs> oh, let's save that one for later. Let's do some, uh, let's do my, my bottle openers. Let's do that instead. I should have specified. It's hard to find, it's, it's hard to find good help these days, you know, so. You guys know how it is. Or maybe you don't. I don't know. We got a little mushroom action. Is that for your <laughs> you are, You're so needy. I need more. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, wow, their relationship is terrible. There's children <laughs> watching your IG. There's, th and there's cats. Lots of cats. <laughs> lots of cats are watching. <laughs> cats. Lots of cats are watching. So, All right, camera two, Jess. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to draw for two separate times. Oh, I dropped it. All right, got it. Yes, I do make random weird noises as <laughs> I go. So these are some bottle openers that I forged just trying to figure out bottle opener blanks to offer on the website over at blacksmithingblanks.com. Yeah, see how I did that shameless self plug there disguised as a giveaway. Oh, yeah. So anyways, so I forged some of these. This one, the hoop came out a little bit too big on the design, so I shrank the hoop down. Um, this one was close, but not quite what I wanted to, so I finally settled on a different style design uh, completely that's kind of like the Goldilocks zone between the two of these uh, that ended up working out really, really well. So, uh, so these were test pieces, and so I, forged, so I forged most of all the blanks for, you know, at least do a test piece to make sure that they're actually going to work um, for, you know, people buying them in the future, right? Like, that's pretty good. So that, that's what these have come from. So I've got a basic one here that I'm going to give away first. And then I have this one I'm just going to call a little mushroom bottle opener because I, I textured the stem and it kind of looks like a mushroom because I had to over-accentuate the church key portion of the bottle opener. So we're going to give 
We're going to go ahead and give away the plain one first, and then we'll give away the mushroom one uh, to one lucky individual. All right. We ready? Mm -hmm. One lucky individual each, I should say, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. And three, two, one. Who do we have, Jess? We have Jacob Rawls with opener. Jacob Rawls? Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Jacob Rawls. You are the winner of the very first. The simple little church key bottle opener I made. Got my touch mark and everything in it. So, uh, guaranteed to open a bottle. And if not, it's free. So, stop your crying. <laughs> 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 All right, we're going to go ahead and give away the little mushroom bottle opener now. All right. Ready? Mm -hmm. Set? You can open up your mushroom ketchup with this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Who do we have? We have William Travers with beer bottle opener. We're William Travel. What? Travers. Travers. I want to call him Traveler, but that's not it. No. William Travers. Congratulations. You're the winner of the little mushroom beer bottle opener there. That is the... Complete with my touch mark in the bottle. That it's, is the shiitake. 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 That's shiitake. the shit. It's the shiitake opener. Yeah. That's what it is. Sounds like a demonetization word waiting shiitake. in the wings, buddy. It sounds like demonetization is what that sounds like. <laughs> Woo! All right. Right on. We give out, give away something else. We'll give away one of Thomas's coat hooks he made. Is that small, medium, or large? Though? This is the large one. Make sure. It is. I, I made, Are you sure? I, I made them. Are you sure? <laughs> I made them. What did you do? I, I made these. They were made from uh, Dead Man Lines for a uh, break wall. So refurbished, turned into something new. Are we at camera one or camera two? Camera two now. Oh, that would that'd be nice. I would. Yeah. I was giving Thomas a chance to ah. talk and <laughs> share about it. Explain the feeling on this, Thomas. What was your feelings? My feeling is, is this stuff comes from three quarter inch round stock. It is a fun <laughs> experience there. But I did use one of the wonderful tools that we have over at fatblacksmithingblanks.com, and that's the treadle hammer uh, to hammer that thing down. And also got to use a little bit of my fly press in this to get it all to the same thickness. So, Boom. A lot of fun. So your feeling is, is it's a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. there you go. Thomas the lot of stranger. work. <laughs> the lot of work. Hook. Coat hook. <laughs> that's, and, that's what you're going for. Large mm -hmm. model. <laughs> and if you guys did come from the last live stream, I asked you guys, what did you guys want to see next in the giveaway? Because I'm giving away three of something each month for the year of the treadle hammer. Just my way of giving back to the community. So uh, once again, we're going to be doing that. Give some, uh, some ideas out there, and I'll pull from one of them. So please give away. Thank you. We may proceed now. We he may. gets to chatting a lot. He's a little <laughs> chatty Kathy sometimes. You chat. Pipe lot. down, Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> Eat your food, Tina. Eat your food, Tina. <laughs> All right, we ready? <laughs> All right. We're going to draw for <laughs> chatty Kathy's hook here. <laughs> Large. Large. <laughs> Leave. Cook. Don't hurt me. <laughs> oh. The only bad thing is hey, that video. feels good. That there, feels good. There, That's for later. And, Don't and, do that now. <laughs> and, and the lots of witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> He's like trying to hurt my neck. I'm like, you know what? I've been needing adjustment. Let's go for that. All right. <laughs> this is for the large hook for Thomas Goodie. And three, two, one. <laughs> Who do we have, Jess? We have E4 Mafia with I'll Take a Lot of Work Coat Hook. <laughs> a lot of work coat hook. Congratulations, E4. Mafia. Mafia. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. M-A-P-I-A. Mafia. Mafia. I was going to say, Ma -pia. welcome, brother, but then. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Get with us through the contact email in the description. There you go. And I think we're good for now. Awesome. What do you think? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Back to work. 
That was a nice little respite, wasn't it? It was. Let me get a bit of water. Questions, Jess? Comments? Complaints? Yes, concerns? Yes. Let's see here. Uh, Jean Dukarski asked how long it took to grind, grind, grind the last one. Um, about 20 minutes. Athol Ironworks says, any thoughts on uploading any of your content to Rumble? Um, my thoughts are is I'm entirely too busy where I'm at already. <laughs> uh, many might know or have, have noticed that I have not posted a regular video in a hot minute. Uh, there's been multiple reasons for that. I have a few in the tank. Uh, that needs some various little bits and clips to, to finish them off. Um, but I haven't been able to put out any new content here here recently because at the beginning of the year, I had a few health setbacks. Then I had some conferences to go demonstrate at and classes to do. And as soon as I got back from those, I had some more health setbacks, predominantly my teeth. So I had a lot of issues with my teeth and then with my foot. So I have plantar fasciitis in one of my feet and you know, uh, it is really being a pain, really being a pain. Uh, it has definitely took its toll on me. So I used to, I used to, when I first started doing YouTube videos, I basically, I smith every day and I filmed three videos a day and it didn't matter whether Roy was angry at the moment, happy at the moment, sad at the moment, euphoric at the moment. I put it all on camera and you got to see basically everything. And uh, that led to people having some misgivings, misgivings about me. I'm like, man, that guy's a complete jerk or that guy's a tool or that guy's whatever. Um, and so I learned from another creator that, you know, really only film when you are at your best. When you're at your best, that way you're constantly projecting a consistent image across the board. And I have not been at my best in the last uh, several, several months. So I haven't been able to put out um, video content yet uh, on that. So even though that's as big of a struggle just to get regular video content out on YouTube right now for me, trying to do additional content on a ver some other platform um, is just not going to be in my future as of right now. So maybe uh, if I can get, get past some of my health issues and stuff, uh, maybe that might be a possibility in the future. I think it's an interesting platform. I definitely think competition is good. It's a good thing to have competition. So anything to make YouTube have to stand up and recognize various voices I think is a good thing. Keep going center. Drive the center. Oh. You hit right there. See it? Not on that edge, my edge. There you go. There you go. Now come back across the face that way. Good. All right. Straight across it? Yep. Well, it's going to be a weird shape to hold. Well, I 
far side. Just middle. Let the edges take care of themselves. Well, get that hot again. Really coming out now, see? Mm -hmm. It's really developing fast now. That's good. We're almost to the point now where we're going to draw out horns on it. But you got to get enough mass out to either side of your center line of your piece. So right here, right, here's the body of the anvil. Here's your horn. You've got to get enough projection out beyond the body of the anvil in order to pull out a really nice horn on it. Otherwise, you end up with a little short stubby horn or super narrow and thin horn. Um, may or may not be desirable to you, but if you want to have more of that classic anvil shape, you need to be able to get enough mass projected out over your anvil body here uh, as to where you can start working that horn out. Now, the great part about this is, is the hard work is literally almost done. Thomas is all his effort into upsetting and squatting this out. This is all the heavy work, right, that needs to be done. The, when he gets into where we're drawing out the horn, even though that's going to be work, we're drawing out a much smaller cross-section of material now. See? So it's going to be a lot easier to work out this horn and pull that horn out uh, than it would be uh, trying to pull something out that's that thick, right? If it was that thick, we'd be having a long day ahead of us, right? If it was, we're pulling a horn that was that big around in diameter versus now that there. So uh, this is one of the fun things about this. I encourage anybody to try making one of these. Uh, get a couple friends, get your group together, get the smithing group together, and forge yourself a little miniature anvil. It's a lot of fun, and it will teach you a lot about It'll teach you a lot about uh, anvil manufacture as well and why certain shapes are desirable and how to go about getting them, which can be transferred onto other work as well. So I want to go back real quick. Mm -hmm. or you got something real quick, uh, Jess? Parake says, what type of anvil is this? Uh, the am what the anvil I'm making? Yeah. Uh, the type of anvil I'm making, I think, and I'm going to make a little double horn anvil. So the last anvil, the little decorative anvil we made, last one we made was a little single horn anvil. Can I show that off the camera? Uh -huh. So we made that out of a railroad bolt. The standard single horn anvil. So the next one, so this one, we're going to make a double horn anvil out of it. So a square tapered horn and a round tapered horn is the goal. Mm -hmm. Kevin Zufeld says, what about making an anvil using the treadle hammer kit? So uh, to make one using the treadle hammer kit, mm -hmm. uh, totally possible. You could do that. Uh, this is a bit more, this is a bit out of the range of the treadle hammer. Um, kit, you would have to really upgrade the weight of the hammer for the treadle hammer kit. Now, the nice part about using a treadle, using the treadle hammer kit, is if you set all of your, if you set all of the treadle hammer up right. As you can see, I don't have an anvil here. I'm doing a show, um, actually tomorrow, and so I don't have the an, I don't have the anvil sitting here because uh, I'm taking that as a little d portable demonstration option. But this here is just a, what is this? A, I think this is like a 12 pound head on this. I believe it's a 12 pound head. Um, so you would have to upgrade this to like a 20 pound sledge probably and beef up the springs and then move everything up a little bit so you could get some good connection on it. But you can most certainly use the treadle hammer kit to do that um, and, and work the piece out, especially if you don't have a striker. Um, there is a limit. Obviously, I did not design this to work on nearly three inch material in diameter stood endways by seven and a half inches, right? It wasn't meant to forge on seven by seven blocks of steel. That's not, there's very few hammers in the world out there that were designed for that. 
um, that are in the public space and domain. So, so that being said, uh, you could do that with say like the railroad bolt we made, anvil. That's a perfect, that's a perfect option. We got a camera number two. That's a perfect option uh, to make something like this all day long. You could do under the treadle hammer kit because it's a lot smaller. It's like almost one inch in diameter. The shank of the bolt was the head's just a little bit bigger than that, right? You can use top tools to help pull out the horns and things, um, you know, and have your hands free to do that. A treadle hammer would be the perfect option for making something this size, or maybe even something maybe twice this size would be okay using, um, you know, using the treadle hammer kit. When you start getting where you're forging on steel that's as big as the hammer you're swinging, right? Now you're kind of approaching that zone uh, where you're getting beyond the, the, the capabilities of that. Again, the treadle hammer kit was designed with an entry level in mind, right? It was, it was designed, it's not an Ang Yang, it's not a Kins, it's not a Kins custom iron hammer, a KZ100 or anything like that. It's not, you know, it's not these various uh, larger hammers out there. It is whatever you got for a sledgehammer uh, on hand in your air supply. So if you have air supply or your foot cranking power. So it is meant to be an entry level option for people to get into powered hammer work, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, actual mechanical work. Now, Thomas uses his all the time. To, I mean, he drew down three quarter inch material to make those hooks. And it took me four heats. It took him four heats to draw down the material uh, to size. So that's a big win for the treadle hammer um, when it comes to beginners and beginner work. Uh, it's, can you work out some big stuff? We had a big dozer arm piece that we straightened out way overkill it was larger than the anvil was and it heated the anvil up to where it was just boiling hot uh where you know water was just boiling off of it and you know what it did marvelously at it was it slow yeah super slow because it just wasn't designed for that right but it is capable of doing it if you have enough time and that was if you have enough time, enough heat. Yeah. That was an inch and a quarter thick. Yeah, inch and a quarter by six inch. And the, the bow in it went diagonally. It wasn't mm -hmm. even straight across. Mm -hmm. We use that to straighten that thing flat. So it is possible to use the treadle hammer kit for some really big thick stuff. What else, babe? What else? Is that good? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I got more questions for this you. But well, go ahead and run them through a okay. little bit. Let's let this thing soak it's not hot yet oh, it, was, it was nice and yellow yeah, yeah. well just don't burn it so yeah. chris Go kelly says who does the pro post-production for videos me so not only do i do the i do the video production i film i edit and i upload everything and then jessica she takes care of seo um you know search engine optimization and thumbnails so yeah. and i've do done that for 1800 plus videos now yeah. so I do the shorts and the so a lot of the social media stuff yep, yep. it's a team effort it's a mm -hmm. team effort so um, so to speak on to speak on content there is some good content coming um, it's just a matter of me being able to get after it um, and get back after it so I have a little sample grill I'll be making here real soon I plan on doing a video series on that uh, and I do mean real soon, it'll be coming out. I have several videos planned around the brand new little fly press that I got from blacksmithsupply.com. Uh, they are a channel sponsor this year uh, here at Christ Center Ironworks, which I'm super excited to collaborate with John over there. Uh, so I've got some, I got the video of uncreating it and building fly press stands and I've shot a lot of footage that way. I've got just a little more B-roll I got to film over at Thomas's shop where he put his fly press. Yep, um, where I the, got a number five. Yep, he got a number five fly press. So I've got some reviews to do on the, um, those fly presses. And then I have some passion projects as well, as well as some masterwork projects as, you know, master, I have a masterwork grill that I will be pushing through uh, by 2025 at the latest. So. And everyone, I did purchase mine. I purchased mm -hmm. my treadle hammer. So. Yeah. Yep. So. That's good. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything good, Jess? Yep. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one of those automated. Oh, uh, one of those automated things. things. Okay. All right. Let's go to camera number two. All right. Yep. Gotta hit the, bring up the end of your hammer handle so you hit more square. You're dragging that side. Come down more toe. Right there? Yeah. So you gotta right. pull up on the end of your hammer handle. Okay. Yeah. Aim for those ridges. Other side. Got to really work the other side to even it out. Well. Good. So now we just got to square up this top and once we square up that top by pushing those by pushing the center down a little bit more and we square up that top that's out far enough that now we can start biting off from the edge and drawing that out into horns. <laughs> this might be a multi-evening project. Yeah, that might make sense. <laughs> oh, I can't damage Thomas. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I'm good. He says he's good while he's flexing his hand out like this, so I can't mm -hmm. damage Thomas. So I'm gonna switch down to yeah. the lower boy. Let's run these let's run the tongs in the water, please. Cool these off. Pokey Fork says, super excited to have you coming to the AACB conference next year. Really looking forward to that myself. That's one of the things I have to get started on. <laughs> you know, the, the interesting... Thank you, sir. It's weird. It's not the one that I'm actually like controlling. Uh, it's the re-pickup. That's, that's getting like, you. Like, Mm -hmm. Just locks it in. Yep. And then it's a reopen. Yeah. So, so the interesting thing is, is the kind of the work that I do now, it takes an immense amount of time. So, um, the the work that I do now takes a lot of time, and so things that I do to have to prepare for to have the projects ready for an event, you know, or a show message, or a demonstration. Keith said he sent you another message. Um, for, for demonstrations and things like that, they take even longer now, right? You know, it takes longer to get prepared. So whereas maybe I could get away with <laughs> coming down to the wire like two weeks out, I'm like, oh my God, I better get prepared for this event because I was making something fairly simple, <laughs> right? 
it was just me cutting some bar stock and making sure I had all my right tools together uh, for the piece. Now, since it's so much more involved, the work is so much more involved, I like to bring things like I will be bringing to the event. Thankfully, I already have some made up. I've got storyboards, you know, to take a demonstrate, to show stuff, various elements. Things are a lot more involved and the, the prep and the setup time is a lot, lot more involved, you know, um, for these things. So it's not just me showing up and like, yeah, well, I got a hand hammer. Uh, just hand me a bar of stock and I'll show you something. It's not like that. It's, it's usually quite the ordeal. Um, so, so that's why, so what I'll be, uh, what I'll be working on throughout this year in the beginning of next year before the uh, conference will be something, stuff that will be going to the conference as well. So it, it's, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot to, to prepare on. And of course that can't just be my main body of work. I've got a lot more, you know, I got other things I have to work on simultaneously and, and be the rising tide. So that's an interesting, it's kind of interesting how that has progressed over the years. Um, it's definitely different. <laughs> Years ago, I did demonstrations for SOFA, um, not Quad State but that everybody knows, but uh, SOFA, the actual group, they would have a monthly meeting. And, you know, occasionally I'd be called upon, you know, five minutes before the, the demonstration was supposed to start because, you know, somebody, you know, maybe the demonstrator got sick or wasn't going to be able to make it or whatever. They're like, uh, you care to demonstrate something really for us today? I'm like, uh, well, good thing I brought my apron and hammer. Let me figure something out. And I'd go to the scrap bucket and I'd find something and I would demonstrate something for the club or for the group on the fly with five minutes notice. Now my stuff is a lot more involved, so therefore it takes many, many months of uh, preparation. That's interesting how that's changed over time. Questions, comments, concerns, and complaints. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Apple Ironworks says, I'm sorry to hear about your foot. I suffer with gout. It's no fun. I understand. I feel you there, brother. I've had gout in my foot before, so um, in my feet. Feet are tough for me. Well, right now I'm running a lot heavier than I, than I want to be. Um, that's the, that, there's one of the other issues, but it's kind of one of those self-defeating cycle things, right? You know? <laughs> Thomas, Thomas and I a joke say, <laughs> say I eat because I'm unhappy. <laughs> I'm unhappy because I eat. <laughs> it's, like, it's a self-defeating cycle a little and, bit. And I so. never really called him fat. I just said he's really, really easy to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm high visibility. High visibility. <laughs> really easy to see. He says, got a camera too. Yeah. Okay. Rust. Give me a brush, would you? Nice. Flip it. Give me a brush. Nice. Good. Thing slipperier than an eel's belly. Good. 
good enough. She's slipping all around. No. Probably go this side, high side. I started to look like something right there. She tell you what dog dig it is. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one big bop there. So, um, secret when working with striker with tools, uh, you can see that I'm fully gloved. I'll be fully gloved even if it's hot out. Working with striker with tools. Reason why is these gloves, thick, a good heavy thick leather, leather pair of gloves will keep a lot of the vibrations and jolt inside this tooling out of your hands, which will help save you on carpal tunnel later on in your life. So, and uh, the second thing to notate is when I set this piece on here, I'm not death grip squeezing this and holding this down on this piece. If I were to do that, and let's say I had this piece rocked up like this, and Thomas were to miss hit, I'm gonna catch all of that right in my arm and jolt. Simultaneously, say if I had it picked up like this and he hits it, I'm gonna catch all of that in my wrists and in my joints. So what you can't see is the way that I'm holding the piece. When I'm putting this on here, I barely got just enough of a grip on this thing just to keep it in place where Thomas needs to hit it. So it's a trust exercise between me and Thomas. I'm trusting him to hit the piece like he needs to, hit the tooling the way he needs to squarely enough. And he's also trusting me to keep it in spot and steady for him to be able to hit the piece. But that doesn't mean, do you see how I have an open palm here? Mm -hmm. on, on camera number two, mm -hmm. they're on that. So see how I have this open palm? So this way, if all of a sudden that hits weird, or if there's any sort of kick up, it has a place to go without directly smacking me right in the wrist uh, when he does that. It's important to do that with a striker and it's also doubly important to do that with any sort of power hammer tooling as well. You do not want to have a death grip on your tongs. So you'll see me holding this piece. I'm not out here trying to squeeze super hard on this to hold this still because I don't want all that I don't want all that kinetic energy traveling up and hitting me in my wrist. So I'm actually holding it up here. And I'm holding it with just enough force to stabilize it so it doesn't slip out. Now, what that does is it makes it look like it is slipping all around and doing things because all that force is hitting and then it's kind of jerking and jiggling around a little bit. But you'd rather that do that there than do that right here on your weak little wrist joints. So. So save your wrists if you can. So we get that hot again. Yep. And you go, Is camera number three, Jess. Right? Yep. If it's still working. I'm doing yeah. it, yeah. Okay, so in this, we're still kind of keeping it upside down as we work this because we're most interested in that top surface right now. And then we're just covering this up. So I'm setting it on top of the pile and then I'm raking up the coke around it to insulate it. There we go. Go back camera one, please. All right. We're good. Let's see here. Uh, metal man. The big thermos, the big black thermos is water. The smaller black thermos is uh, water and juice. And the green thermos is coffee. Yeah. I'm out of water and juice. Oh, Jenny, go get some for so, you. So I went to a straight <laughs> water and coffee. Mm -hmm. So. Roger Caldwell says, Jeannie and I are looking forward to seeing y'all at Quad State this year. Roger, us as well. Look forward to visiting with you and Jeannie. Uh, Thomas, Dana says, uh, if you design a sticker for your shop, he'll make them for you. Yeah, do I do need to get one. It's just gonna be my touch mark. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'll, I'll have Jess help me with that. Hopefully she'll help me. I'm not a technological person. You just draw it and it we'll scan be, it in. Yeah. 
That'd be doodle funny. it on a drawing. paper and we'll scan it in. So, yep. Uh, Kevin Rapito, Rapito says, what are your suggestions on tooling to add to the shop once you have your forge, anvil, hammers, tongs, and basic hand tooling? Mm. Um, so things I would suggest, I would say um, bandsaw, angle grinder, drill press, As far as power forging tools, think about fly press, hydraulic press, and or um, power hammer. I would say that those are all valid things to take and add uh, to the shop. I would say once you have your basic things, you need to figure out kind of where you want to go with it, right? So it's more about getting your fundamentals down and kind of figuring out a, a direction you'd like to go. So maybe you want to be getting down, go down the route of making hammers, right? Uh, sledgehammers, I'll just throw something weird out of it. You want to make sledgehammers for a living, okay? Well, then you start designing your shop to work efficiently around the production and, uh, uh, you know, the creation and the producing of sledgehammers, right? So you would buy accompanying equipment that pairs nicely with that endeavor or for that type, that particular goal. What you don't want to buy is you don't want to buy a bunch of expensive tooling that is useless for you or things that you're not interested in. So like for instance, it makes no sense for me to go out and purchase the world's best knife making grinder that you can get, the best two by 72 grinder out there that costs 12 grand, right? It makes zero sense for me as an artist smith that has no inclination to make knives ever. It makes no sense for me to put a purchase out on something like that and add that to my shop. Now, is a, you know, is a shop 2x72 grinder very handy to have in the shop for other purposes, for other grinding? Other than knife making, yes it is. But what that tells me is, is I don't need to go spend a lot of my money down that direction, right? So a lot of my shop is now, I've got all of the basics and I have went through four different iterations in my shop and change outs of specialty tooling based upon what I'm into at that moment in time and what I've been into production mode for or producing for clients. And so when I've decided like, nope, ain't making any more of those, I don't invest any more money down that route. And so the tools I have, they sit around for a while. If I decide that they're no longer useful to me, I ship them on down the road to someone else. And I sell them off and I get things that I am interested in and use them now. So now I'm more gearing up towards the route of what I am most interested in, which is French Baroque ironwork. And so a lot of my tooling that I'm adding to my shop now is specialty and very specific. It's a very niche thing that I'm adding to my shop now. And it's only tooling surrounding that is support that is in support of doing my French Baroque ironwork. So that is the plan now for myself. So for you, once you've got your basics in, you need to take and figure out what type of smith do you want to be at some point in time. And it might take you years to figure that out. So if you find some good deals on some, you know, tooling as you go, by all means, get it. You know, if you can get a hydraulic press and it's, you know, fairly cheap, sure, go get one. But maybe you don't need to get a coal ironworks press right out the gate, right? Maybe you do, maybe you don't but that's really up to you based upon which route you're planning on taking. You know, so yeah, that's why I say. Uh, one guy I'd like to point out that really did this, and I've really enjoyed watching this, this young man. I'll call him a young man. I won't call him a kid. I'll, he's not a kid anymore. He was when I first started watching him. Um, now he's a young man. Um, one young man that I appreciate watching is Liam Hoffman. Uh, What's a great, if you go back and watch uh, Hoffman blacksmithing, if you look on his YouTube channel, you go way back when he first started making axes. That's predominantly what he makes. He makes axes. He's built a whole forging empire on making 
his own custom handmade axes. And the transition to where he's just gotten busier and busier and he's bought in tooling that fits his production and what he's doing. And it's a good, clear visual representation of progression over the years that he's really sold out to axe making, right? He's really sold out to making axes and he's bought all of his tooling buy choices aren't for making gates, right? He doesn't have some gigantic layout table for making big gates or railings. No, all of his tooling is set up for the production of axes. And it's cool to see how his efficiency has improved and as he, as he has went on there. And so, that, so that's my best ad advice to any of you out here um, that are getting in and you're thinking, okay, what's next? I got the anvil, I got the forge, I got the tongs, I got the vise. You're basically smithing at that point. You should be able to build any of the hand tools or specialty weird hand tools that you need, given enough experience and time. And then as far as your big, big purchases, that's something that you have to decide which direction you kind of want to take your smithing. If it's architectural work, let it be architectural work, you know, you should be good to go. You might need power hammers, maybe you need fly presses, maybe you need punch presses, maybe you don't need neither. Maybe your next big tool is a gigantic layout table with clamps, right? So this way you can get gates and railings square and plumb and true as you build them out. I am a king of long-winded answers because <laughs> nuanced answers are just exactly that. I have to figure out and cover all my bases of what might be meant. Go for it. Hold up, Thomas. You gotta wait till I'm set, bud. I thought you had it. No, I was totally missing tongs altogether. Nice. Still got a bit of a rhombus to it there. That side needs to come down a bit more to plane. But I'll take that one more time and I'll focus on that edge alone to really push that, compact that down. See, it's too much now. Not bad. That's pretty good. That's actually looking really good. See it? Yeah. yeah it's pretty square across. The... She's high in the center. Yeah. So we'll get a heat. We'll come back across the center with it nice and level. And then we can take care of the rest of that with a grinder. So we should be ready to start pulling out the horns. Mm -hmm. We might make the set downs on those, but I don't know how far we'll go with that tonight. So we'll make the set downs at least to start drawing the horns, but that might be as far as we, as far as we get yeah. in this evening's stream. It's 710 currently, just so you know. Okay. We're actually doing really good. Mm -hmm. We've already given away a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. And to be at this, this stage, I thought it was going to take a lot longer than that just to even get to this stage. So, mm -hmm. so you got the Thomas on. Yeah. Well, and it's progressing. So we don't have huh, knock on steel. We don't have a lot of 
miss hits to have to clean up, right? We have progressively forged this down in a systematic way to where it has spread nice and evenly for us. If this would have got a little off to one side as we went, then we would have spent about twice as much time trying to get it all back centered up so we could continue our work. So that's really key, taking those small progressive steps as you push this material down and form it out into shape to get a good base started. Like any good building project starts with the foundation. So get a good foundation to start with and slowly build from there. And that's what we've been doing. That's why it's took in so many heats and yada yada is because we're trying to keep this as even as possible. If, you, if we would have went too, too far, like thin this area out too much, but left that area thin, we would have been committing to something now at this point that other, we otherwise may not have look, you know, wanted uh, in the future uh, development of the project. So starting with good bones is key, but that's looking really nice. We'll just leave it as that, call it a cobbler's anvil. <laughs> it's a shoemaker's anvil. We're good. Just throw some touch marks on it. <laughs> Keith says you've moved a heck of a lot of material in two hours along with giveaways, rants, and rambles. Yep, sure have. I even sat down during part of that. Uh huh. I don't know why I'm yelling. I've got the microphone on me. I'm busy yelling at the Loud camera. Noises. Uh, I'm busy screaming at the camera that's over here, but. I've got the microphone on me. David should, Horner asks, will the base of the mini anvil be left round? I don't know. I'm still deciding on that. I kind of like it round in a way. I like a little tell of where it came from. Haven't decided yet. Haven't decided yet. Square is generally what people do, right? You know, <laughs> generally that's what's accepted, right? You kind of want it to be square. So this Put way you can at least throw it. something. Yeah, pull some feet out on it. We might go the route of pulling out feet on this one. Just so this way it has that classical form to it. Mm -hmm. We're making a mini yoga. Yeah, square it up and pull some feet out on it maybe. But I do like the round. I think that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that base being round, illustrating where it came from. Jacob Rawl said, Thomas should make at least one swivel shackle for the giveaway. Jake, I already made one, bud. <laughs> All right. Let's give away some more stuff. Speaking of anvils, we should do a ring-a-ling-a-ling. -a God, right. let that soak. We should give away some anvils. Oh, give away a anvil. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I can see that part. The baby. The babies. Man, my light shut off on me. It did, yeah. We're in our battery. That's, that's a bummer. Dark. Um, I think that's the only, the only four I got. I've got, uh, actually, if you go in my, if you go in my bag, Thomas, there's two heavy duty batteries, like yeah. big, thick, tall ones replace the yeah bring those and replace this camera this light over here with them <laughs> all right yeah, we're right. camera one or camera two two right, camera two mm -hmm. all right so this one's special because this is celebrating this is a commemorative anvil this is celebrating 250,000 subscribers milestone mm -hmm. which is awesome so, obviously limited edition. Me and Thomas, at our last live stream, we actually gave this, we actually made this from a railroad bolt. And in here, there's actual some telltale signs of the threads that were still in as part of the bolt. So, the head of the bolt became the top of the anvil here. And then the threaded column, or the shank of the bolt that was threaded, became the base of the anvil and all upset there. Mm -hmm. So, Pretty neat deal. And this bolt started off like that long. So, mm -hmm. to be squashed down into that there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> completely it's different. It's been transformed. Thing. Yep. 
So this thing could be used. Um, it is hard. It is a hard bolt. This thing is not soft. Um, it's it's actually very very hard. Um, I can't. Can they hear that? Mm -hmm. So it's actually a pretty hard bolt already as it is. Um, so uh, pretty cool. Go it's got my the, shop. No, nope, over here. I know. That one. Yep. You should be able to just pick them up and you'll see how they kind of hook on in there. Just shift up and out. There you go. Um, so this, this particular anvil, it's got the shop crest on it, uh, touch mark. My good friend Thomas Goody there had made for me. It has my personal touch mark on it, and it has Thomas's touch mark on it. So products that Thomas and I work on together, just like in smithing shops of old doing projects, you have the main shop hallmark that goes on it of the shop that it came out of. You have the master smith's touch mark or the person that was the lead project foreman's touch mark on it. That's their signature to sign off on the work. And then you have the journeyman smith uh, underneath them that would take and sign off on the work as well, that they had worked on that particular project. Um, so it has those three hallmarks on the anvil there. And uh, yeah, I don't know what it weighs, but it's, <laughs> it's a little thing. Yeah. What, about a pound and a half? Yeah, right around. About a pound and a half <laughs> of anvil there for you. So. Mm -hmm. If you were to have to buy this anvil from me, it'd be like $1,000. So like, you know, it's only like $750 a pound, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most expensive anvil ever per yeah, pound. Per pound, <laughs> right? So a very uh, treasured piece. I, I like one of these. You guys got to watch it the last live stream live while we made it. Um, and then, you know, of course, I ground it and stuff off camera, uh, which is just it's like it went like you would expect grinding things so but yeah so there you go made from a railroad bolt mm -hmm. so we're gonna go ahead and give that away now what do you think honey what, yeah. is there a lot of excitement around it there is yeah yeah, yeah they so, are excited. again this is a special commemorative piece um i may before i send it out to you i'll have to see about it i might i might punch in 250,000. oh stamp it stamp it with 250,000 mm -hmm. across the base here somewhere uh, if I can get the stamp to do it again this is fairly hard as it is so we'll, we'll have to see about that it might come to you as is just like this so all right we're gonna ring the anvil all right and we're gonna pick one name one mm -hmm. lucky uh, one lucky subscriber at random from the comment section down below okay we ready yep ready set go Who do we have, Jess? We have Jeff Killian with Anvil, please. Jeff Killian, congratulations, brother. Everybody give Jeff Killian a round of applause. Go ahead and point to somebody better. Yeah, Jeff Killian, congratulations. You are the winner of this special $250,000, uh, 250,000 <laughs> subscriber. <laughs> I wish it was $250,000. <laughs> Specialty Anvil here. So maybe one day it'll sell for that much. Yeah, you know, will. When I'm like dead and gone. Yeah. Yeah. In my crypt. I'll still be alive. <laughs> no, I was like, I'll still be alive. I was the one who killed you. What are you talking about? <laughs> Shop accident, anyone? So, congratulations, Jeff Killian. Super awesome. So, set that over there. Jeff, you said you wanted to give this to me, though. <laughs> so, there'll be a. Uh, uh, we at camera number one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, there will be a giveaway on the 500,000 subscriber anvil as well. That's the one we're forging right now. So that one's gonna be a huge one. Uh, th there will be a special giveaway uh, live stream for that as well, uh, once it's all finished up and done. Which will be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think people will be excited about that. You never know. Okay. Maybe we'll hit, hit a spike and we'll be like sending a million subs <laughs> when it's time to give that thing away. Ugh. <laughs> and then we'll have to make oh. a bigger one. Oh. Okay, stop we, at, I we stop never, at a million okay. subs, though. I was going to say, we didn't officially commit, so. Hey, I stop. It'll either be a very expensive anvil we forge, 
or it will be a very large anvil we forge, but it stops at a million subs. Go for that, tiny, but just gold leaf it. Yeah, maybe yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make it super decorative that way. Mm -hmm. uh, some etch work in there. I don't know. We could probably go. The capi our capabilities here is probably we could probably go up to a twenty-five pound anvil, and that mm -hmm. would be about the limits. That would be the max that's, out that's of what of, of, of what could be done here in the shop. So, mm -hmm. and uh, I would have to probably bring in my power, uh, bring in a hydraulic press. For that, we did have so. about five other guys across Michigan last time we had a live stream offer to come in and help with that. If yeah, you help sledgehammer away. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we might have a whole troop here, <laughs> you know, to, to do that at a million subscribers. So, but that is at least six months away. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you think. <laughs> That's at least six months away. So. <laughs> we'll worry about that when we get to it, right? <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go ahead and give away the medium or the mama bear hook here. We gave away the papa bear earlier from Thomas Goody Moot. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to say about this, Thomas? Uh, feelings? No. Uh, feelings? Uh, first time doing a little fish scroll on it, actually. Yeah? Fish tail scroll. Did that satisfy you emotionally? It did. It brought me great joy. Did it make you feel like a true artist? It did. Sweet. It brought me great, great joy. It's like an awkward conversation, isn't it? It is. You're, you're, you're kind of Anal good. analyzing you emotionally on yeah. camera for the whole world to see. I'm a man. I don't have emotions. <laughs> All 300 people watching right now. All 300. I thought we were at like 97. <laughs> They're all friends. So. They're all friends. They're all friends. That's good. You're in a safe space. I'm in a safe space. <laughs> Only because the cameras are rolling right now. <laughs> I hope those batteries stay up all night. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go ahead and give away the medium size leaf hook uh, for mm -hmm. coat hook here. Mm -hmm. We'll call it the mama bear hook. Mama bear. Go. Give away the mama bear hook. Mama bear. Mama bear. We'll go ahead and give that away now, mm -hmm. and I'll ring the anvil. When I come to a stop, you know what to do. You ready? Who do we have? We have Mad Mr. Fox with Captain Thomas Goody Hook. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Mr. Fox, congratulations. You are the winner of the Captain Thomas Goody Moot Hook. There you go. Whichever Arr. one that one is, ARG. Get with us through the contact email in the description within 24 hours, or we'll give it to somebody else. That's how that works. And I will not cry, and I will not lose sleep at night. Now we're going to give the final one away, the baby bear. The smallest of the small. It's the but small it's the, goody moot hook. But, but it's the goodiest of it's, the hooks. It's the goodiest <laughs> of the hooks. The goodiest the moots of the hooks right there. Yes. <laughs> are we at camera number two? Yeah. Camera one. Both. Both? All Where are we? Now we're at number two. <laughs> now we're at number two? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and give away this one next. And we're going to draw for it. Ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. <laughs> we have. <laughs> we have Debaca Maker with a vine hook. Hey, Debaca Maker, congratulations. You are a winner of the little baby bear hook. The Thomas Goody Moot baby bear hook. Yeah. The goodiest of moots hook. The goodiest of moots. Now, once Camera again, one. guys, please, any uh, suggestions or anything like that? I don't know if you guys have already given any suggestions, ideas, thoughts. Please do that. I'll be making three of whatever you guys you know come up with i do not make knives for this channel i repeat <laughs> do not make knives for this channel <laughs> keep it tooling centric if you could i'd like to stay with tooling yeah if you could. let's let's try to keep it tooling centric so yeah but i was it was a great pleasure making these guys for you i can't <laughs> remember who came up with it in the last live but you guys came up with some great ideas and <laughs> came up with um three coat hooks so i have a suggestion three blacksmith shears 
Do you hate yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, if you want to help me, then yes, we can make three. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know Damn. what you were thinking there, buddy. Fingers one says toilet spoons. Toilet spoons. Uh, Roger Caldwell says dinner bells. Ooh. Travis Steve Art W says punch sets. There you go. Pietro yeah. says I want some tongs. Well, we already have, Ke you have a Keith gentleman Bear. by Keith Bear or Possum Sausage. He is very generously giving out one pair of tongs each month. You can make more so. tongs. I could, but I don't. <laughs> I, I enjoy one set of tongs here. Hammers. I do have the fly press now. You can make a hammer. I might. There that that might be down the line. <laughs> you know, I love seeing him backpedal. Got to got to watch making promises on camera. <laughs> not three of them. Uh, it has to be something of three. Hey, you committed to three items. Steven. You committed to three items, Thomas. You did not say what type of items. You just said three items for each live stream. That's yeah. one, that's three items every two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steven Padilla says a rivet block and header. Well, we, we sell those. Okay. Chuck Fun. Miller says pointing fingers. Gene uh, Ducart says like Roy's pointer finger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make some pointer fingers to send out there. There you go. Poke, poke. <laughs> you could, be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah though. Just, just go and forge it out. It looks easy, huh? You can make it. You could do it. I feel like I could. Go for it. Go for it. That might be one of the. Right now, I'm already committed to three. That might be the <laughs> next one where I say just <laughs> one of something. I'm committed to three right now. I can't go Good. back on that. Kevin Zufelt says hammer or axe strips. Gene Dukar Dukarski says dragon head. They are getting out there. <laughs> it's three. They are getting out there. I, I'm thinking uh, so far. You need to dial it back 4%. <laughs> Dinner bells. <laughs> Dinner that's bells. That's what's going to be the next uh, one, guys. There's well, they can vote. They can vote. And then you can go back and watch the comment section. Oh, no, no. The already, they don't get a vote. They oh, just, they well, I, mean, you, I mean, you told them to give you the suggestions. So. And, I, and I took one, so I'm going to be doing dinner bells. We bicker like an old married couple. So three dinner bells. I All, got day. All, All, All day. All day. All day. Then I tell them to shut your mouth, you insolent slave. Get back in there and work. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Zufelt says horseshoe nail hooks. You should be able to make three of those. <laughs> <laughs> he should be able to make those. Should. I don't know. They'll probably be crooked just because you suggested <laughs> them. It's, it's, it's artistic, though. Yeah, that's yeah. That's how I meant yeah. for it to be. Yeah, artistic or autistic? Which one? Well, you know, well, the jury's still on them now. <laughs> oh. All right, let's give away one more thing. Okay. We good? Yeah. Let's give away a uh, possum sausage tongue. Let's do that. Yeah, we'll do, do that. that. We'll do that one. Do you want to do possum sure. sausage? Whatever Let's you do want. possum sausage. Okay. Fine. I got a picture of it, so I'll pull that Okay. Up. Pull up possum sausage's tongues. Okay. They're up. They're not made with possums, nor are they made with sausage. <laughs> <laughs> but they are made from a meathead. Yes. They are made. They are made. <laughs> So anyway, so this for Keith Bear Possum Sausage, as you all know and love him here on the channel. Uh, he has graciously decided to take and donate one pair of tongs uh, throughout all of year 2023 and the year of the treadle hammer. Uh, so thank you, Possum Sausage, for that donation. And thank you, Thomas, by the way, for your donations oh, yeah. as well. Um, greatly appreciated both. So we're going to go ahead and give that away now, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you want to win some great tongs that are sent directly from Possum Sausage. What, what style are they, Jeff? These are flat jaws. Flat tongs. jaw tongs, yep. No, no possum, no possums or sausage necessary. We're harmed in the making of those tongs. Well, we can't guarantee that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we're not giving that disclaimer. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and roll for the anvil now and see who we get, right? Mm -hmm. Ready. We have Jess. We have hoodoo with tongue time. Hoodoo. Hoodoo. <laughs> you got some tongue time. So get with us through the contact email in the description, and we will get you in touch with uh, Keith Bear. Possum sausage. Cool. Kid, always breaking things. It's because I can't read, okay? Oh, 
well, yes, you can. It's just not good. My, 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 my mama said I was the smartest one in class. Too, too bad I was homeschooling only child. Dude, they were painted before you got a hold of them. <laughs> what in the Lord's... <laughs> <laughs> go away. <laughs> hey, hey, don't go away, man. Just go away. <laughs> That's what my dad told me all the time as a kid. <laughs> my dad said, "Go, hey, don't go away, man. Just go away. <laughs> it was that simple. <laughs> all right, we camera two? We are now. Let's go to camera two. All right, so now we have something very awesome from Robert Lonis. Robert Lonis took, a, or treadle shed as you know him, here on the YouTubes and the interwebs, he has very graciously donated this hook bending jig. Jig fixture, it's technically a jig, but. So the way it works is obviously you've got this rusting nest, uh, Russian nesting dolls type of situation here where you've got multiple sizes of pipe that all slip over this one shank and increasing sizes of roughly about an eighth inch of material at a time. So, you know, it gets about a quarter inch bigger in diameter as you go. And these are meant to be locked in the vise, okay? So you lock these in the vise, lock them up in the vise, and you have one that holds all of your stack on there, and then you have your pivot pin that locks in the vise, and then you slide this to find the right width of the material that you're looking after. And when it's all clamped up, now it's your hook bending jig. Um, a very, very well thought out design. He's done a really great job with this. And I think someone is going to be absolutely super enthralled and impressed uh, when they win this. Not only does it have that, not only does it have that one for the rings, but it also has one with a half inch drive socket uh, uh, stub out here. So you can put any half inch drive socket on here, you know, deep well sockets, you know, any size diameter of those that you can now snap on here and literally do the same thing. So you can adjust that with your socket on there to make any types of bins and hooks that you would like to do. So pretty cool design. You get it as a complete set. And again, that came in from Treadle Shed or Robert Lonis, uh, big supporter of the channel. We can go back to camera number one, Jess. Huge supporter of the channel and a great friend and a very talented smith as well, might I add. So, um, yeah, couldn't be more pleased to take be giving this away. Thank you, Robert, uh, for doing that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, this is sick. I need some of these for my shop. I was mm -hmm. going to say, Roy, those are now scratched, <coughs> so that means... Need, some <coughs> need one for the shop. <coughs> <laughs> They're scratched. Yep. They have to keep them, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what that means. Yeah, you, you did a good job. <laughs> good job good looking out okay so anyways so we're gonna go ahead and give these away now oh is everybody pretty excited they are so comment with something with hook jig in the title and we will go ahead and give these away now you will have to get with us through our contact email in the description and we will get them shipped out to you um, as soon as we have your information like name where you are that sort of thing. Blood type. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blood type. All right. Ready? Yeah, ready. Set? Go for it. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Go. <laughs> Who do we have, babe? We have Terry Hillen. Terry Hillen. Terry Hillen. Congratulations, Terry Hillen. You are the winner of this wonderful treadle shed hook bending jig. Right here. Boom. So amazing. So amazing. Looks great. Congratulations. Get with us through the contact email in the description. And we'll get that out to you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, two things. Uh, I want to address some things about the giveaway stuff. Uh, everything that we've given away to this point is open internationally, so we will ship it anywhere in the world uh, and here in the U.S., uh, except for the tongs, the mm -hmm. yeah. uh, possum sausage tongs, because we're not going to put that burden on him.
to have to take a chip as tongs to Brazil or something weird like that if someone won, won there. So all these are open to anyone in the US or around the world. The treadle hammer kit will be open only to US residents. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think that's it, right? That's it of the big stuff, right? Yep. So so the that's the only stipulation there. So now that I got now that I got that out, uh, there's two there's two last things that I that I would like to address. So it costs us a lot of money to take and ship these items out. It also costs us a lot of money to ship these out overseas or around the world. That being said, we do have to put an associated value on these. So if you win and you live in Ireland for say, right? Say you live in Ireland and, and you win something from us, we have to plot, we have to put a value on the item for insurance purposes, okay? That's not what we charge. We write it off as a gift because that's what it is. It's a gift. You didn't purchase it. It was an exchange. But certain countries do still have taxes that you have to pay or duties that you have to pay for an item coming in, whether it's marked gift or not. So, long way around the boat. Be sure that you want to actually win the item. We had an item not too long ago that went overseas and got rejected and we lost all the money of sending it overseas to the person because they didn't want to pay the custom duties of their country on the item. That just kind of, it sucks the food out of everyone else's mouths, right? So if you aren't serious, don't comment. <laughs> to win anything. If you want to win an item, win an item. We ship everything free of charge to you. There's no additional costs or anything like that. So if it costs us $100 to ship it to you, that's just what it is to us. So we just ship it, right? There's no questions asked. That's what Jessica and I do, right? Mm -hmm, correct. So if it gets all the way over there, I'm pretty steamed under the collar if it, if it gets all the way over to you and then it costs me 150 bucks to ship it to you and then you don't accept the charges, whatever it is in your country, right? Because I shipped you a spork. To say, yeah, I'm not, you can look that up. We're not responsible for duties or customs, anything related like that at your own country. So just to keep that in mind. So I have to put that out. The, and then the very last thing, and I've been harping on this forever, but you know, just like herding cats, that's what it is like hurting YouTube commenters, unfortunately, is we are abiding by a very strict policy of 24 hours. You have 24 hours to get in touch with us with your contact email. If you haven't heard something back from us in 24 hours, that means you need to do the responsible thing and resend an email to us to see, to, to claim your prize or prizes, if you will. Because after 24 hours, tough luck, Chuck. I won't be tolerating it this year like I've done in past years. So it's a nightmare on my finances. It's a nightmare on our scheduling and our shipping and everything like that for a free giveaway item. So we won't be doing that any longer into the future. So don't, again, don't comment on the giveaway portions of the live stream if you don't intend to win something. Okay, pretty simple. It, it, it's common logic there. Do the do the decent thing for us, if you would please. So, commentary on that, Jess. Uh, let's see. Pietro says I am local, so pick me. <laughs> that's gonna be the new. That's gonna be the new thing to say. I'm local. Pick me. <laughs> I live down the street. Pick me. I'll be over in five. <laughs> Crackerjack says, seems straightforward. You Eric, would think. Eric says, cats hurt easier than commenters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could always put two down for cats. That's yeah. <laughs> uh, and Kyle Jones uh, had asked who got his hammer, so I told him, and I said, thank you for the syrup. I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome, Kyle Jones. Thank you. So, yeah, we like to keep it, we like to keep it light, lighthearted here. I love getting good tools into Smith's hands. I love getting them into your hands out there, beginners and intermediates alike. I like the community that we have here on YouTube. 
Um, so, you know, don't take me wrong and all that. But there is the bit, so there has to be the rules, right? And the rules are we're coming out of our pocket and out of our community's pocket to send you an item. You need to do your own due diligence. You need to do your own research on that. And you need to be able to, you know, uh, be a competent human being, right? Uh, and, and just think about that. Have some courtesy. Uh, you would think that you wouldn't have to say that around a giveaway because it's free and, you, and people will like free stuff. But we have people who unclaim prizes all the time. And it's just like, really? It's like, okay, that's fine. You know. And we've had a few people come through nonchalantly six months later. And be like, oh, yeah, I won something a little while back. You guys never shipped it to me. I wonder what was up about that. You never emailed us. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Can I get that item now? No. <laughs> Go pound sand. Just won't put up with it in the future because it's a disrespect to the community at large and it's a, disc it's a disrespect to what Jessica and I are trying to do as far mm -hmm. as, you know, bless others out there. So it's like, yeah, I'm starving. I'm homeless on the side of the road and starving, but, uh, you know, maybe you can come back next week when I really want a cheeseburger. It's like, right? Like, no. Uh, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't be that guy or gal. David Payne says you have an excellent turnaround time, and we thank you. You're very welcome. Oh. We literally have the fastest shipping anywhere in the U.S. when it comes to our blanks, like our any of our tooling blanks and our blacksmith tools that we sell th through our website. Most of the time, we are getting them in within one to three days processing time, business processing time. Generally speaking, we are same day or even next day getting stuff shipped out to you. And then when we hit our Mondays, we hit our Mondays, gr hit our ground running, shipping out items. And part of Monday will be all the giveaway items. They will be shipped first thing Monday morning and on their way to the recipients. So we put a lot of effort and take a lot of personal pride in doing that. So least you can do, the very least, is provide your address through an email so we can send it to you yep. and receive it. <laughs> yeah, Keith Bear says he goes by the same thing too. Yeah. Does he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like I said, we, we get it out like psh, next day, most times. A lot of times that's the same to yep. hours. <laughs> yep. Well, one guy's order was 45 minutes. It came in, we were processing orders that morning, and we were able to get, we were able to not only get the job cut because we didn't have it on hand, we cut the job, cut for the job tumbled the job, had it in a package and out with the mailing orders for the day within 45 minutes. So yeah, fastest shipping in the business, period. And we adhere to that. We adhere to that as just a, as a thing to do. So th that's because we care. We care. Who likes to sit around and wait for two months while someone sits on your item like an egg that you're trying to hatch? <laughs> Nobody. For me, it drives me crazy. I'm like, um, purchased that thing three weeks ago and they're just sitting there and the time's rolling away clicking away you know so Gene Dukarski says sorry you all have been burned in the past uh, yeah well and it, it happens it happens luckily 99 percent of all of our giveaways have went to people who really needed it really respected it and really enjoyed it and you know and so we're super excited about that but as we get to be bigger and bigger as a channel, there's bound to be some bad actors that show up. Give that a brush hard. Anytime you let something sit for a long time, all right, we're going to have to give it a pop. It builds up a lot of scale. Got to whack that. Good enough, let's whale on it. Oh, we got some heat.
Ben. Ben. Nice and square across the top now. Get a little more over here because it's got a bit of a lean. Looks like it on camera. Can't tell. So maybe right on there. Good. Not too bad. Brusher. Kevin Z. Felt, to answer your question, is there a way to set up monthly donation through your website to remove the fees taken by YouTube? Um, uh, the most direct way to probably do that would be through PayPal. We have a, a PayPal link down below. Uh, although it's not monthly, like you would have to manually do it, I think. Or the best thing you can do is become a channel member and utilize those great promotion codes we have over at blacksmithandblanks.com. Yeah, and get yourself your own um, Oh, work good. All right. I think that's good. Because to be honest, that's the best support you guys can give us is, you know, going over to blacksmithblanks.com, buy some of our stuff that we have over there. Yep. You know, e even just being here is a blessing for yeah. us. Yeah, as far as monthly support, one of the great ways of doing a monthly support thing you know, even if you don't want to be a channel member, because yeah, again, you know, channel membership, there's a good portion of the money that goes towards YouTube, right? They got to feed the beast, keep the wolves at bay. Um, one of the great things about going over and supporting us with our blank work and buying blanks is it's not, you know, we make money from that. So it goes directly into our pocketbooks. It goes to help support Thomas and his family, supports us here on the channel. But it's also it gives you something in return as well, right? It gives you something of actual value other than just, you know, my content, right? Just supporting just the video content and video work that I do. Um, so that is one great way of doing that. And so maybe think about if you want to go that, down that route instead of a subscription-based service, maybe just think about maybe a new project you might want to do once a month, right? And go that route and maybe, you know, purchase yourself something uh, through our website that way. Um, and that way, you know that 100% of the proceeds go directly to us, right? And you can write in your notes. I think they have order notes on them mm -hmm. um, where you write in your notes. Like, hey, this is for my monthly thing, you know, that I just want to show you guys support. And we get a lot of messages like that on our orders. And it means a lot to Thomas and Jessica mm -hmm. and I, uh, you know, to get those. We, we really like those notes and we handwrite on each one generally we write not we write notes to you on the thing thanking you for your order and you know if you're a repeat customer we notice that and we you know uh, we do that and then also we throw in a bunch of freebies as well uh, generally uh, well we throw a little too many freebies in sometimes I think but you know hey I'm interested in supporting the craft of blacksmithing and continuing this thing for generations to come. So why not, right? You know, throw some extras in there. People can have fun making. And who knows, maybe they're like, hey, this really sold at my last Christmas bazaar. I'm gonna go buy 40 of these next time. Maybe it works out, you know, so. Yep. 
but yeah, as far as monthly subscription platforms, the only thing we have for monthly subscriptions is channel memberships, and we offer huge discounts over at our website for those. I believe they start off at what, 10% off? Mm -hmm. Yep. At the Bellows Boy tier, mm -hmm. and they only go up from there. All the way up to Golden Master Smith tier, I think, gets what, 50% off? 40% off. It's 40% off. 40% off Golden Master Smith tier. 40% off products and all downloads free. Yep, yep. So, so we try to invest a lot in those. Uh, those particular platforms you know that route but thank you for I just want to say thank you for even thinking of us right I mean that's huge uh, you know it makes me feel good on the inside that you know you're even uh, you know thinking about us in that way hmm. awesome sausage sent a five dollar super chat right, well, so. it kind of goes out but is that yeah okay well it bulges here too as well so we have to grind all that back or huh? the horns can just kind of well the horns are going to be bitten and drawn out so and then you just square everything up with a grinder so all right obs yeah. tells me we're reconnected i'm waiting for confirmation all right the chat hopefully we will be live here in a moment momentitos senoritas Yeah, OBS says we're back, but the chat's not responding yet. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, here we go. Yes, okay, we're back. Are we back? Yep, we're back. You need to double check it. Yep, I'm checking it. Huh? Said I am double checking it. Double checking it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We had an Aurora notification, so. Mm hmm. That always jacks with the internet up here. Yeah. So we're back live again? Yep, we're back. Okay. You want to double check it? Yeah, I just checked to see if I was like, are we back? Yeah. <laughs> Get all sorts of stuff. That's right. We can't leave without giving yeah. a, giving away our treadle hammer kit. Yeah. Can't give away <laughs> that. Are we back? Are we live? Yeah, we we're good? Live. Okay. We live. have confirmation of we're being live now. We are Wait. living the dream. You guys have better odds. There's 47 viewers. Oh, good. Go. Well, that's great. Maybe <laughs> odds forever be in your favor. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh at all them fools. I think it's three. <laughs> that's the Girl Scouts. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Thomas was in the Girl Scouts. <laughs> oh, well, what I was doing is I was just commenting before we went dark there that I'm going to leave the anvil at its current stage now. Uh, we got down late enough. I need to take it and do the treadle hammer giveaway. And then I wanted to do a small Q&A uh, while we're at it. And Thomas can definitely use the brake, I'm sure. Uh, swinging that sled, heavy sled. I got so. a blister. Yeah. He's stuffing it out. He's got a big blister on his oh, hand. Yeah. So. Mm. so we'll let it go. Uh, let me pull this out. I'm going to put it in front of camera two. Can we go to camera two, Jess? Yep, sure can. So this is as far as we got this evening. Um, it's really important to just, you know, take our time, do the right progressive forging steps. I want this to be a nice anvil uh, for somebody. I don't want it to be a junker, you know, like, oh, well, we roasted it. Oh, well, you know, I want it to be a nice anvil. So we're going to take our time. As of right now, four and a half. it's four and a half inches tall. How, how long is the width here? Six inches long? And it's going to get a lot longer because we're going to draw out these horns. So it's going to have a much longer area there. And it'll be about an inch and three quarters in width. So not too bad. Um, I'm actually thinking I like the round. I think I'm going to leave it round on mm -hmm. the base. Mm -hmm. I'm really digging that. Yeah. Well, I kind of really dig that base. And it's very, it's very centric right now, too. It's actually... See how it's not really leaning any one direction? Mm -hmm. I really, I really like that portion there. So, so I think I'm going to leave it round. Um, people can do with that whatever they may. Mm -hmm. So you know. Are we going to squat it down more? Is it going to get um, squatted down more? Because right now it seems really, really tall. Not really. It's going to stay about the same. I think. I think we're done squatting it down. Okay. Um, we may we may upset the other end a little bit. I want to draw down. I want to draw out the horns. That's what I want to do before I do any other work there. I want to go ahead and draw down, draw down the horns. I'm pretty happy with this shape right now. Yeah. 
I'm pretty pleased with it. It's, it's a very unique shape, and I think that that's kind of cool that it's unique. Yeah, even if we did so. up there, it would still keep it. And, and the benefit, ladies and gentlemen, this could be dropped into a bit of fence post pipe with like a plug welded in it with sand, yeah. back, back filled with sand or gravel or something. This could be put in a fence post and it would be like a little post anvil that could go right by. That's the way I would use it. I would put it in a fence post inside a bit of pipe where it sits down, you know, an inch or so into the pipe, mm -hmm. the end of the pipe, yeah. and be a post anvil right by, the, right by the forge for setting small welds mm -hmm. on things. That's what I would do with it if I was going to use it and not just put it up on a shelf. But it'll be a great interesting conversation piece nonetheless. But we're going to draw these out the next stream we do. Next live stream, we'll actually draw this material out into horns and uh, make go ahead and finish out the horns. We'll probably stamp it, touch mark it, all that jazz. Or grind it and then heat treat it and, yeah. and have our touch marks on it when we grind it and heat treat it and send her on down the road as that and make that that 500,000 subscriber anvil. And we'll make sure to stamp this one with the 500,000 before yep. we heat treat. <laughs> yeah, before we heat treat. Yeah, since it's 4140, so. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. What you can do with a round bar of steel and a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Now we only need it, you know, we just need to make it bigger next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Start with 25 pounds of steel. Do we even have anything bigger here? We would have to get some. <laughs> I'd have to make some specialty top tools. Yeah. Top top foolers to take and do anything bigger. So, so we're going to let this cool naturally in the forge. So this way the expansion rate, the contraction rate is all of the same. Um, and it'll do that nice and slow over several, several hours. So it's just good and ready to do whatever we need to do with it next time around. So we'll just let that cool naturally in the forge. And uh, slowly contract. Are we at camera one? We're at camera three. We should be at camera one now. I am not. Okay, she's there. So, yeah, so I'm going to let it just cool over there in the forge naturally uh, over a long period of time while the coke slowly cools down. And then that will help it not develop any cracks because this is a very large piece of material. Just the air cooling it as it's ch chilling it, it could chill it too much as it's cooling down in air. So with, with larger chunks of material. Uh, this, that's kind of borderline. It's probably not such a big deal here, but you can create a lot of stresses in that piece if you just left it out in a really cold day, say in the, like maybe it's 30 degrees or 45 degrees outside, and you get a little cross breeze blowing across it, that's enough to really chill it down and, and cause some internal stresses, uh, especially in a big thick, thick piece like that. Especially if we go up to doing like a 25 pound anvil, yeah. We will have to wrap the thing in cable, so it cools down, or would and, and keep it down. Uh, we'll we'll have to do. We'll have. We'll, we'll have to bury it in cable. We'll okay. have to do cable and probably bury sand in it like a bucket and let it really come down over a long time. So that would be a fun one. Yeah. Five pounds. Yep. Maybe that's what the three. Maybe that's what the million subscriber will be. Twenty-five pound <laughs> anvil. What do you think? That'd be a monster. Hmm. That would be a monster. Kind of ought to keep it, though, you know, for, like, when people come to the shop, you know, Think for classes, to keep it. they yeah. can, like, forge something on it, and they'd be like, I forged on that memento anvil. Yeah. <laughs> Can't keep everything, unfortunately. I'll just keep the million subscribers. How that sounds. <laughs> so what's people saying, Jess? I want to do a see. quick Q&A sure. and then give away a treadle hammer kit here. All right, let's do that. i got to sit down. Um, let's see, clock maker, I've seen those on the docks. Eric says, Thomas, are your hands yep. getting soft? <laughs> My hands are far from soft. Fingers oh. says, you can't be a hot hand model with blisters. <laughs> you can Show it, honey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sheesh. What working here. man hands look like? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Gene Dakarski says, "What do you use for finishing metalwork?" Okay, um, that's kind of that's kind of a broad thing of what do I use? I use a whole range of things. 
So I use a paste wax finish here just recently that I've been using and I've been pretty impressed with um, is uh, Zach's wax. It's a, a forged finish a thing that he just developed to replace a Johnston's paste wax. I've been using a, you know, using some tins of that. Uh, here recently, I use beeswax finish. I use cooking oil. I use uh, motor oil. I've used transmission fluid as finishes. I've used a whole range of different finishes. It just depends on what I'm desiring uh, to do with my ironwork. And then, of course, the good old trusty standby paint and primer, you know, primer and paint. So. Uh, you know, I, I use a whole range of finishes. Most of my iron work that I have done over the years has been for clients. And for the clients, in the type of work that I've been doing, you just go to paint. You don't want to be messing around with, with uh, natural finishes that are going to rust, especially if it's something very expensive, some sculptural piece, right? You don't want it to be rusting. A week or two after they get it and then you have to go refinish the whole piece because a lot of times the sculptural artistry type blacksmithing work 90 percent of the cell of the piece is its finish right so it is how well it's finished you know maybe you polished an edge on a leaf because it gave just the right amount of shine and contrast and you want to keep that edge polished. You don't want it to rust out in a week because you decided to rub it down with some, you know, uh, turtle wax or something from a car wash and it wasn't good enough, right? So, uh, so I've always used paint, a lot of clear lacquer, clear gloss enamel for a lot of my sculptural work. Uh, that's been my kind of go-to uh, over the years. Now, when it comes to food grade stuff, whatever food grade oil you can find, generally speaking whatever food grade oil you can find uh, you know that that'll work let's see here possum sausage he sent a five dollar super chat he said i didn't see the last two so uh sorry see. possum sausage <laughs> thank you for the last two five dollars while chats. we were out the blackout zone uh but it said to help ship the tongs oh wait this doesn't help me laughy face <laughs> yep saw that one and Jacob Rawls sent a five dollar super chat. And says, "I will throw some in." Thomas hits hard. <laughs> yep. Jake, I, I he does get, hit hard. Thank you, Jacob get down Rawls. There and see you guys. Greatly appreciate that. Pogi Forge says, "Roy is the YouTube blacksmith king." I don't know about that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Redneck Forge says, "Do you have a video on making a guillotine tool? Did did we post one on our tool yes. tips as well?" Huh. Did we, did we, I think yep. we did, yeah. Yep, everything's been posted, yep. Yep, it's on the team. Mm -hmm. Yep, I sure do. Let's see here, um, Chris Kelly, what does Roy want for Father's Day? A nap in the <laughs> hammock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a simple man. Well, no, a nap in my hammock, that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, but you could have world peace. Nah. Yeah. I want a nap in my <laughs> hammock. <laughs> Everybody else Don't can take care of themselves. <laughs> Don't be unreasonable. Uh, Stephen Padilla said, I had the crazy notion this was supposed to last for two hours. How silly of me. <laughs> yeah, how silly of you. Hopefully you're having fun. Well, you're still here, so you must have been having fun. So, yep. Nathan McAlpine says, I recently bought an antique coal forge and I'm going to restore it, uh, then start using some coke. Very cool, Nathan. Very cool. Let me know how that works for you, brother. <laughs> Redneck Forge says, hail to the king. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they come up with the king <laughs> statements, bro. So, who, who knows? Who's not Elvis? Yeah. It's Roy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe they're picking on the fat side of me. Is that what it is? They fat shaming? Is that what that's called? They're fat shaming. <laughs> They're like, he's the Elvis, a blacksmith. Wow, he really, <laughs> really let himself go. <laughs> I, I do know at a certain age, you give up the sucking it in kind of thing. You don't do that anymore. You're like, eh, I am what I am. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> it's all due to Jess, really. We're going to blame Jess. Yeah, it's all Jess. She's too good of a cook. Far too good of a cook. 
Oh. William Travers says, which is better, a cast anvil or a forged anvil? Um, I would say, uh, we'll go out on a limb here. My opinion, my personal opinion, is I believe if you can get a solid one piece forged anvil, means it was forged from one solid piece, you're going to by far have a better anvil than a cast anvil. The only reason why I say that is there is a significant reduction of risk of having inclusions or porosity in a forged piece a forged anvil, a solid forged piece. It's going to be a little tougher and stronger. That being said, we have come a long way in recent history when it comes to cast steel anvils and a long way when it comes to heat treatment and alloys and things like that. And I will say that Generally speaking, if you're worried about a cast steel anvil um, breaking on you, you're worrying too much. There's about nothing you can do to hurt a cast steel anvil. The anvils that I've done destruction testing on, and even the cheap Chinesium ones that people say are junk, have held up. Have held up to lots of sledgehammer abuse like way more than you should ever do on an anvil. You should never directly strike an anvil surface with a sledgehammer. Rather it be old, new, or whatever, cast or forged, you should never hit directly on the steel face uh, with a sledgehammer because expect there to be some issues with that anvil after you're done. And all of the cast steel anvils that I have that I have worked on and Thomas and I have done destruction testing on have held up to a 16 pound sledge and a 12 pound sledge going full hams on it with 20, 30 strikes in total with no steel on it, whacking on the horns, whacking, on, whacking directly on the surface and even the edges and they have all held up uh, remarkably well. So as a beginner or as an intermediate or as a person who's just getting into the market, and the reason why I do that for beginner or any intermediate uh, smith versus a professional smith, a professional smith probably has already answered that question for themselves. But if, you, if you're just getting into the anvil market, don't shy away from a cast steel anvil. There are cast iron anvils out there like the 55 pound Harbor Freight Anvil that's blue and it's got an ugly horn and everybody rags on them. That anvil is cast iron and it does not hold up to sledgehammer work slap, smashing the, smashing the face of it up. It did not hold up to that type of work. It broke in multiple places, but that's because it's cast iron and cast iron is brittle. It's not ductile iron, it's cast iron. So totally different than cast steel anvils. So there you go. Modern metallurgy has made it possible to cast a steel anvil out of basically any type of steel you want, known to man, and heat treat it properly to make it a good serviceable and useful tool for many, many years to come. So. I got an actual question here. Mm -hmm. know. What's the difference between ductile iron, and I know what cast iron is, but mm -hmm. What's the difference between the two, though? So that's over my pay grade to, okay. to answer. Right, that's over. My, I, I, I know round about the correct answer to that, but I'm not going to answer it just because I don't know enough. Okay. I, I don't know enough of the differences, the actual chemical makeup difference of cast versus ductile. Right. I do know there's a difference. Okay. There is a difference to it. It has something to do with the carbon content and also a few other factors okay. of what they put in the... In the, makeup in, in the makeup in the mix okay. yeah so that, that, that just because that, that popped in my head I was like well what's yep. really the difference between the two but 
but you have like ductile iron swedge blocks. This is a great topic. Um, you have ductile iron swedge blocks, for instance, and they're made from ductile iron. No one's swinging a sledgehammer at a ductile iron swedge block, right? Like you're not going to chip out a swedge block. That's not like that's not what their purpose is, right? They they have different depressions for you to form things in, right? So so a ductile iron swedge block ought to handle up great for just about anything you're doing for it for its designed purpose. Now, if you try to take and you know say it has a flat side and you're trying to use that as your main primary uh, forging anvil, you're probably going to have issues because it's ductile iron; it's not cast steel. So um, and as an FYI, and I do plan on doing several update videos on these in the, in the future. So um, Chinese to English is not very good on listings, right? So they use the same listing and they cover all their products, like on Amazon, things like that around the Achayo anvils. And they'll say, oh, this one's an iron. This one's cast iron. It's cast steel. It's cast steel. Someone will say, forged steel anvil. It's cast steel. It's not forged. There's, nothing, there's no part of it that's forged. It's a cat. There's sprue marks on it. <laughs> there's sprue where they cut it off is visible. It's a cast steel anvil. So all Achayo anvils are cast steel anvils, at least the ones that I have found, and I have bought a lot of them boogers, <laughs> more, more than I should uh, over, over time. But those are cast steel anvils anvils even if they say forged steel even if they say um, you know cast iron they are a cast steel anvil your harbor freight 55 pound blue anvil uh, the central forge anvil that is cast iron not ductile iron not cast steel it's cast iron which makes it an inferior quality anvil compared to their other option which is their doyle brand anvil if you're going to buy an anvil from Harbor Freight, I recommend the Doyle brand anvil. The Doyle brand anvil is a hardened cast steel anvil. If they, call, if they change it up to where it's forged steel, they're lying. It's cast steel. It's a cast steel anvil. So uh, just you know, beware on that. So when you look on there and they're saying, happy, fun, sunny time, you buy anvil, cast steel, forged, fun. And that's their listing. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> it's a pig and a poke. You don't have, you have no clue whether that anvil is cast steel, cast iron, or otherwise. Buy it, check it out for yourself. If it's dead soft, it's most likely cast iron. Ship it back. Um, and, and don't mess with that. So, good. Yeah. Black Collar says, Black Collar leads in recruitment coming soon. Thank you, Black Collar Iwerks. That was a great question. Sorry, long-winded reply. Hi, Desert says, Roy, how hard can you smack a Holland Anvil 50-pound swedge block like the ones you gave away two years ago? Pretty hard. Pretty darn hard. They're not meant for it, but you can smack them pretty darn hard. And we're going to find that out because I was given one by Greg and Hobie over at Holland Anvil. Uh, I got a 66-pound pass-through anvil. I still need to make a stand, and it, its own individual stand for it, and I've got an axe I need to make. That's one of my videos I've still got on the go uh, to come. I, I've got a large hewing axe that I need to make uh, with it. So, Travis Sevart W says, what is your favorite thing to craft? A paper trail. No, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, my, my favorite thing to make uh, is French Baroque ironwork, period, the, the whole thing there. Uh, I am more interested in, uh, I am more interested in home furnishings or things, small architectural pieces. I'm not really interested in gates or railings, uh, just making 10,000 of the same picket is, does not interest me in the slightest. Or making 10,000 of the same type of scroll and, and, and never doing anything different doesn't interest me in the slightest. So I, I like making things like wall sconces and chandeliers and 
tables and chairs and, you know, end tables and that sort of thing. That, like, that interests me most to forge. So, yeah, that's basically it. You know, that, that's, that's the majority of it. Really, it's not the item specifically, and it's more of a particular style. Kind of like, if, if I were to relate it, you know how some people like steampunk? That's what French Baroque ironwork is for me. That's, that's, what the, that's what the difference is. So, you know, some people, you know, they like steampunk. They don't like to craft anything specifically in ste that steampunk genre of stuff. They just like the look, right? They like the uh, ambiance of it, right, in their life. And that's what I like with the French Baroque ironwork that I tried to craft and, and do, so. Jacob Rawl says, what does Roy think about Thomas's no weld shivel swivel shackle? What do I think about it? I think he did a marvelous job. He's come a long way since when he first started working with me. A, a long, a long, long way. So, um, which, you know, he makes me proud. Makes me proud. That's Thank you. good job, me boy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the last question I have set aside. Okay. Coach 10X says, what do you use for an anvil stand? Mine was wood, but it's rotting out. So the anvil stand that's in my shop that Olga's sitting on right now, 465 pounds, uh, is a 375 pound three-legged or a tri-legged base. It's a steel base with steel legs filled, back filled with sand uh, with little foot pads, well, large foot pads on the ends of them. And that's all sitting on top of a concrete pad that is sunk into my gravel floor here. Uh, my other stand that I use for uh, the treadle hammer kit that we'll be giving away here in just a second, the other stand that I use for that is a bunch of six by sixes bolted together uh, with some all threaded rod and some construction adhesive between the gaps. And that is what I made for a stump. I like that better than a natural stump in a lot of ways. The reason why I like that better than a natural stump is A, natural stumps have a lot of chinking issues. You can get that if you don't get the right kind of species of wood and you don't have the right dryness of wood um, and stuff like that. You know, you can get chinking that happens in those, which then that means they split, right? You know, they crumble underneath the feet once you're, you know, wailing on them all the time. So. So that's one reason why I like a bolt together stump versus a natural stump. The second reason why I like a bolt together stump versus a natural stump is you get to be very selective of size. You can get in real close. You can build an you can build a anvil stump to the size of your anvil base, or you can make it really big, or, or like way big bigger than your anvil base, or you could do all sorts of configurations, whereas with a simple anvil stump that blacksmiths have been using for eons, and it's more than, more than valuable to do it that way, a simple anvil stump is round, and you're putting a square peg on a round hole, and so you have a lot of dead and unusable space on that stump, unless you cut it and shape it to size, uh, which is, you know, which you can do uh, uh, to it, so. So that's, that's my preference, if you will. Those are my preferences. Uh, I got into bolting them together because I've got a swedge block stand that I made out of a whole bunch of four by fours all nailed together. And I made it out of scrap four by fours. These weren't even good four by fours when I made it like a decade ago and it's still holding up. Like they were half rot when I bought them and it's held up well and it's nice it's like a nice compact square it's not a weird round lumpy thing with a, a tree branch sticking off of it it's like a nice square thing i can put it into the corner of a shop if i need to so those are my preferences so beyond that um i would like to actually build for olga i would actually build like to build a concrete pillar base for Olga. Um, I have a permanent height in mind set up. I would like it to be like a stone base and, it, and, and include hammer and tong racks, kind of like hammer racks, tooling racks around the bottom side of it, which would just be like a large plate that the anvil would sit on and that plate would be 
uh, adhered to, bolted into the concrete pillar. I would like to do something like that. That way I can take and have add a significant amount of rigidity underneath. Because even though all combined, this anvil and base and all the tools all together weigh almost a thousand pounds sitting right here on this spot. It's like 900 and some odd pounds uh, sitting right here in this spot. With whaling on it, she will move. Just ever so slightly over time, it does drift. It, it has a tendency to drift. Huh? It's shaking the camera a bit. Yeah, right so it does have a tendency to drift mm -hmm. just a little bit. And that, every ounce of kinetic energy that you're whaling on a piece, I like to go back into the piece, right? Versus going into moving your, moving your anvil about. Now, she's a heavy girl. Most things I'm smithing on, little 3 8 rod or half inch stuff, doesn't matter. But whenever we get into any sort of sledgehammer work, she starts dancing and moving a little bit and I'd like a solid thing that's never going anywhere mm -hmm. um, you know that it could be mounted to permanently so I might do that when I build the stone hearth uh, in here yeah. yep that's good to know that I was hitting so hard I was shaking mm -hmm. cameras so. mm -hmm. yep shaking cameras and blowing scale across the floor yeah. mm -hmm. there you go all right well are we ready to give away the treadle hammer are we I think we are. Was there any more comments, questions? No. Down the list, not just the ones you Gene put aside. Dukarski, how do you find a Thomas? He comes to you. He comes to you. <laughs> he won't leave. Did, did you guys not see the post? <laughs> I told him to crate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys have good odds. There's only 66 viewers right now. Only 66 viewers. Yeah. Okay, well. Let's give it away to one of those 66 viewers, shall we? Let's do that. That's the best we can do. Mm -hmm. All right. So, now has come the very important time. Since I've answered questions, I have, we have partially forged our 500,000 subscriber giveaway anvil. Mm -hmm. um, and is get, getting to work on that. It's going to take a couple streams. Oh, hopefully we'll have it done by our million subscribers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's been slowing down on the channel, so hopefully mm -hmm. that, you know, we will have time to, mm -hmm. to get that set up. Uh, we will go ahead and give away our treadle hammer kit now. Mm -hmm. So, again, this is open to USA only. Sorry for all of our friends around the world. We, we do love you, but we hate the governments of the world right now and their, <laughs> their <laughs> fees that it is for us to send cool stuff outside of our own country. Uh, so that's a big bummer. We know. We understand and we cry with you in the shower, <laughs> like <laughs> real men <laughs> do. <laughs> um, so, uh, so we're going to go ahead and draw for that now. You have to comment something with treadle hammer in the comment section down below. So in the comment section, you should already been commenting in. So mm -hmm. go ahead and comment with something with treadle hammer in there. And mm -hmm. we are going to draw one name at random. And then you have 24 hours to message us through our contact email in the description to claim your prize if you are indeed picked to win said prize. We ready? Yes, we are. Are they commenting? They are commenting. Are they burning up their little fingers? Quite ferociously. All right, let's go. Who do we have, Jess? We landed on Scott Carlson with Treadle Hammer Time. Scott Carlson, congratulations. You are a winner of our Treadle Hammer Kit, our Christ Center Iowaworks brand Treadle Hammer Kit. Get with us through the contact email in the description, and we will get it shipped out to you Monday morning pronto. 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 And Black Collar, thank you for the five uh, memberships you just gave away. Hey, thank you, Black Collar Iowaworks. And Continue while, to add to the black collar legion. While everybody's commenting, do we want to draw like three names for stickers too? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's okay. let's give away some sticker packs. Okay. Donated to us by the lovely Dana Maggiore. Yes. Let's give away three this time around. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Sound good. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, if you're feeling sore and sad that you didn't win a treadle hammer. Now comment, sticker me, please, if you want to try to win a sticker <laughs> pack from Dana Maggiore. 
Um, we have some Christ Center Ironworks brand stickers in there. Got some winner, winner, chicken dinner stickers for the 100K sub a celebration. We have we got a whole host of little stickers uh, to help sticker up your shop. Sticker me up. With our merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and draw three names. Okay. You ready, Jess? I'm ready. Are they commenting? They are. With the catchphrase? Yep. All right. Three, two, one, go. Who's the first name, babe? All right, Roger Caldwell. Roger Caldwell, congratulations. Mm -hmm. You are the first winner of the Sticker Me Please. A little contest there. You will be receiving, if you contact us, a sticker pack. Ready? Yep, ready. And here we go. Person number two. Uh, Stephen Padilla. Pad Dia with I am the sticky baby. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Fadia, I don't want to even ask. I just had one of those. But the other you day. are the sticky baby. <laughs> I had one of those the other day. It was not great. No. <laughs> it was brown sticky. Not a good one. Uh, ten out of ten. Don't, don't recommend. recommend. <laughs> <laughs> it was like just throw the baby in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> that is called epic parenting of the north. All right, let's move draw for number three. Who do we have? We have Bill Will with Sticker Me Please. Bill Will. Congratulations, Bill. Way to win one, brother. Going to get some stickers from us. Sticker, sticker. Contact email. You know what to do. You know what to do. Bill's been here forever. Bill knows what to do. Put a sticker on Thomas's forehead. <laughs> smack! Only if I can smack it when I do it. Smack! And then film it too. Got to be able to film it. Keep it out of the beard. Yeah. Oh. So uh, I want to take this time to say thank you. I want to thank everybody um, part of this stream. I want to thank everyone who watches this stream in the future. If you're watching it on the replay. Uh, I really do appreciate the support. I appreciate everything that you all do uh, on a daily basis for us. The commenting, the liking, the sharing, all that good stuff. Um, just the kind compliments, you know, the kind emails you send. Like, it, it really does bless Jessica and I and Thomas as well. Um, so, you know, we really do appreciate that. And, and we appreciate this type of support of you guys just being here and spending, uh, you know, spending your Friday night with us. Uh, we really do appreciate that. Really do. So so thank you from the bottom of my heart and everyone here at Christ Center Ironworks for that. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is I will be having more videos coming up. I can promise you that if the good Lord don't take me out of this world first, um, I will have more videos uh, coming out here soon. Regularly scheduled content will proceed here in the future. Uh, like I said, I've had a, you know, a couple rough patches over the last couple months here. Uh, that has really kind of shot a hole in a lot of my early spring plans. So I've got a lot of catch-up work to do and uh, very little time to get it done in as well. So, But I will be working on some really cool projects. Stay tuned for that. I have some really cool videos to shoot, um, and you know I look forward to sharing that with you all as we go along. Uh, lots of really cool stuff is happening. And especially this year, a lot of a lot of cool stuff is happening this year. So thank you guys for putting up and putting up with me all these years and tolerating me. We couldn't have done it without you. Is that right, Jess? Mm -hmm, that's right. Yeah. So now you know what Jessica feels like. <laughs> <laughs> She's had to tolerate me all these years, so uh, and, and put up with me. So, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the stream. Uh, we do greatly appreciate it. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Is there any other questions? Um, or are we good to go? I think we're good to go. I do okay. have a poem. You have tonight. a poem? Yep. All right. I do. So, I'll, well, let me let Thomas have his final thoughts, too. Okay. He's here. Do you have any final thoughts, Thomas? I just wanted to say thank you guys for coming out and enjoying this wonderful live stream that we had. It was a blast making that. Definitely do recommend getting a, a couple friends or even take this project on yourself like Roy was saying. Um, it doesn't have to be this big. Get yourself a bolt. Give it a go. Get out there. Forge. 
have fun while foraging. Do it safe. And it was a blast tonight. And just want to say thank you guys for coming out. And hopefully we have some great videos coming out soon. I don't know all of them, so don't hit me up. <laughs> um, and if you guys aren't already following me, I do have an Instagram where I do put my stuff out there. Um, Shameless plug. Shameless, Shameless plug. plug. Hey, I'm trying to get followers, man. Oh, this is yeah. what this has come to, huh? <laughs> no, not really. I, I, dude, you see my video photography. It's not that great. Shh. So. Don't tell them that. They won't subscribe over there, do you? <laughs> oh, they still. Go subscribe to Thomas yeah. Goodymoot. <laughs> uh, it's just Thomas Goodymoot across all platforms, however you guys want to look me up. So um, thank you, guys. <laughs> I like giving Thomas a hard time, in case anybody was wondering. If it wasn't clear and apparent, <laughs> yeah. I like giving him a hard time. I can. I'm allowed. It's because if we didn't have good camaraderie, I still wouldn't be here. Yep. You know? Yep. Yep. We got good camaraderie. Oh, like peas in the pod, we are. A peas and carrots. A shriveled pod. <laughs> it's been laid out in the sun for too long. <laughs> it's kind of damp, so it's a bit moldy. Ooh. You know, it's moldy and shriveled. <laughs> That's kind of our pod. <laughs> You're the old one. <laughs> you can't let him get too excited, you know. He's a big head, big <laughs> ego. <laughs> Got to dial him back. Got to dial him back from time to time. So. Talk about twenty percent off there. Yeah. Well. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Thank you guys for being here. Um, Jessica, mm -hmm. lead us out with that poem, girl. All we'll right. catch you all on the next one. Bye now. This one is called The Removal, and it is found on Anvil Fire's website. A nervous old gentleman, tired of trade, by which, so it seems, he a fortune had made, took house between two sheds at the skirts of town, which he meant at his leisure to buy and pull down. This thought struck his mind when he viewed the estate, but alas, when he entered, he found out too late. For in each dwelt a smith, a more hard-working too, never doctored a patient or put on a shoe. At six in the morning, their anvils at work, awoke our new squire, who raged like a Turk. These fellows, he cried, such a clatter and keep, that I never can get above four hours sleep. From morning till night they kept thumping away, no sound but the anvil the whole of the day. His afternoon nap and his daughter's new song were banished and spoiled by their hammer's ding-dong. <laughs> he offered each Vulcan to purchase his shop, but no, they were stubborn, determined not to stop. At length, both his spirits and health to improve, he cried, I'll give each a thousand greenbacks to move. Agreed, said the pair, well, that will make amends. Then come home, said the squire, and let us part friends. You shall dine and will drink on this joyous occasion that each may live long in his new habitation. He gave the two blacksmiths a sumptuous regale he spared not provisions, his wine, or his ale, so much that he was pleased with the thought that each guest would take from him the noise and restore to him his rest. And now he said, tell me, where you mean to move? I hope to some spot where your trade will improve. Why, sir, replied one with a grin on his fizz, Tom Forge moves to my shop and I move to his. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining us and have a wonderful evening.